Guys don't forget to support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 1, Chapter 1, Transmigration Kanaha In the most famous building in Kanaha, an old man, smoking with a smoking pipe, was staring out of the window. Behind him, a table full of papers, which needed his signature. Hiruzen Saratobi, however, continued to stare out of the window at the fourth Hokage's monument. Today was exactly a year, since Kanaha had to face Nine Tails' assault. Hiruzen finally let out a sigh. Kanaha suffered the most losses of any village in the Third Great Ninja War due to having to fight every village. And merely a year later, they had to face another assault which not only killed the fourth Hokage, but also a lot of their ninjas and civilians. This not only increased the burden on him and existing ninjas, but also caused Kanaha's orphanage to be overpopulated. Here is inside again, finally starting his day by getting that damned paperwork done. In one such orphanage, Suzuki Fujin, a five-year-old orphan, was sound asleep. Suddenly however, he got up, screaming in pain while holding his head and falling unconscious. The scream woke up his fellow orphans, who alerted the caretaker. A few hours later, Suzuki Fujin woke up, but still under intense headache, thinking damn what the heck's up with this headache. While I did stay up late last night working on that project, I haven't ever suffered such a headache. And it feels like memory is all jumbled up. Slowly he opened his eyes and looked around. Frowning upon noticing the unfamiliar surrounding, what is this? Where am I? This ain't my room. He tried getting up, but suddenly noticed, why am I so much smaller? Did I somehow return to the past? However, his thoughts were broken by two kids walking into the room. They suddenly ran towards him and one asked Fujin, are you all right? Whereas the other one asked why did you yell? Fujin saw them too, thinking who are these two? Wait I think I know them. But how? Damn this headache is unbearable. And I need to get my thoughts sorted out somehow. With that, Fujin pretended to fall unconscious again, trying to make some sense out of the situation. The two kids however got worried and ran back to the caretaker. While he pretended to be asleep, he started to gain access to new memories. Memories of Suzuki Fujin. It took five hours of gaining clarity, an insufferable headache and disbelief for him to understand, fuck. I transmigrated. And into the fucking Naruto world of all places. But how? I don't even remember dying. Don't you need to die in order to transmigrate? And damn, transmigrated from that safe world with rules and regulations into this deadly world full of cunning and powerful ninjas. And I got transmigrated into a fucking civilian off all people. After a few minutes of disbelief and ranting, he finally calmed down and decided to understand and plan his future. He thought, alright, I guess I'll be known as Suzuki Fujin from now on. Unlucky fellow to lose his life by someone transmigrating into him. I wonder how that even works. Anyways, I got a lot of information from his memories. His parents seemed to have died in Kurama's rampage and he was incredibly lucky to live. And damn, after being admitted into the orphanage, he was examined by Root to see if he can be taken in. Lucky me that they didn't choose him. Hmm, since Kurama's attack took place a year ago and since he is five years old, it seems I'm four years older than Naruto and his generation. All right, that gives me more time to train and gain power. The Uchiha massacre should occur after around seven years, Kanaha crush after twelve years and Pain's attack and fourth great ninja war after sixteen years. Wait, what's this feeling? At that moment, he felt a weird energy flowing through him. He thought, is this chakra? His memories didn't have anything related to Chakra. So does it mean that Chakra was unlocked when I transmigrated into him? Finally some good news. With this, getting into the Ninja Academy should be easier than other civilians. Though I wonder how does my Chakra level compare to Chakra level of others. Anyways, probably better to get a look at the surroundings first to understand more of this place. With that, he finally stopped pretending to be asleep and woke up. 
Creator's thoughts. Finally started. It was tough, I got stuck on the very first word itself, lol. Anyways, please let me know how the chapter was. If there are any grammatic or spelling mistakes, please let me know, I'll correct. Also tips and ideas are highly appreciated. Chapter 2, Chapter 2, Orphanage After getting up, he could see that it was already evening. The clock showed that it was 6.30 p.m. He also noticed that he was incredibly hungry. He thought, I haven't eaten anything all day, no wonder I'm so hungry. I need to grab something to eat. I also need to act as a kid. I hope no one notices any changes in me. He walked to the door and heard a couple of noises outside. On opening it, he saw those two kids playing with each other. He recalled that their names were Sakaiki and Aoki Daisuke. Both were good friends with Fujin and also shared the room. Ika had lost his parents in the Kurama assault too, whereas Daisuke had lost his during the Third Great Ninja War. Looking at Fujin, their faces showed concern and quickly ran to him. Daisuke asked, Fujin, what happened, are you fine now? Nodding his head, Fujin confirmed, yeah, I'm fine now. Sorry about before. Had a terrible headache. Ika said, oh, that's a relief. We were worried about you. Right at that moment, a growling sound was heard, and all three kids looked towards Fujin's stomach. Fujin looked embarrassed and said while rubbing the back of his head, guess I'm very hungry and Ike remarked, figures, you've been sleeping all day. Daisuke then put his arm around Fujin and said, well let's go to the mess and see if there's anything there. All three kids started to make their way to the mess. On the way, quite a few kids gave Fujin a curious look. A couple of them also asked how he is doing now. Fujin analyzed, I guess they all heard about me screaming and falling unconscious. Fujin recalled from his memories that there are over 250 orphans in this orphanage. Fujin wondered I wonder if Naruto is in this orphanage too. On reaching the mess, we saw the caretaker. Her name was Saya. She was a middle-aged woman, and also very friendly. Upon seeing Fujin she quickly approached him and inquired about his health. Upon hearing that he was alright, she felt relieved. She informed Fujin, we were very worried about you. We called a doctor to check on you. But he didn't understand what was wrong with you, I'm glad you are fine, but you still have to get checked up once again. Fujin nodded and replied, thank you. But right now I am very hungry, is there anything I could eat? She nodded, and replied, yes, the dinner has been prepared. Though there's still some time for dinner to be arranged for everyone, I'll arrange the food for you. Then Saya prepared a plate for Fujin, while Daisuke and Ika went away to play. Fujin started to eat thinking, the food's okay. Not very tasty, but it's alright considering that it is an orphanage. It seems that we are given three meals here, morning breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Also lots of fruits are available to eat. Sadly meat isn't provided here. Still though, nutrition provided here should be alright. So I could probably get some training done without having to worry about food. Anyways, I should fill myself up. After finishing the food, Fujin retired to his room. Falling back into his bed he started thinking, well what a day. Though it's rather tough to act as a kid, luckily no one noticed any difference in me. It's good that there aren't any ninjas in the orphanage. Guess I need to think what to do now. Now that I'm here. I don't want to be a no-name cannon fodder. And my knowledge about future events also gives me a great edge. So how exactly should I proceed forward? With that Fujin started to think about all the possibilities for him and what all he should do. Upon analyzing for half an hour, he finally came to the conclusion, all right, though I know the future events, without having enough power, all that knowledge is worthless. Not to mention, there's no guarantee that things will progress exactly as it did in the manga. It had too many plot holes anyways. And providing someone else with this information is a strict no. They'll just throw me to TNI department or in an even worse case to Danzo. 
it will also change all future events depriving me of my advantage. So I suppose planning for the future events can be left to the future, and will depend on how much power I have then. Right now the main focus should be on improving my own power. So how to go about it? Well for now, normal jutsus are out of the question. Normal civilians don't get access to jutsus, so jutsus could only be taken from the academy. And I can only attempt to join the ninja academy next year. Even though I know about many jutsus and know what they can do, I don't really remember the hand signs for them. The only jutsu whose hand signs I remember is the shadow clone technique. Sadly it's a jounin level technique and dangerous enough to be classified as forbidden. Not to mention, knowing those hand signs itself won't be enough. I guess the hand signs made the chakra move in a particular manner or display some properties which allow those jutsus to be completed. Until I gain that knowledge, attempting hand signs would be rather pointless. That said, I could try jutsus and training that don't require hand signs. Raise Nan, Elements and Chakra Control can be trained. Since I have unlocked my chakra, chakra control exercises would be crucial to do. Only issue is that I don't want anyone else to watch me doing them. I guess I can try to do leaf concentration over the next year. Tree climbing could attract a lot of attention. And with a village full of ninjas, it's impossible to ensure full privacy. Luckily, the first and second stages of Ray's Nan training can be done in privacy, so can the first stage of elemental training. Apart from that, I should try to improve my body. Heck, this is probably the most critical. While my physical condition ain't bad, it's not very good either. So I should start with light exercise to build up stamina and power. I wonder if I could do something similar to Master Rashi's training, and it would be incredibly helpful if I can catch Guy's attention. Oh well, let's see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully at least this headache will be gone by tomorrow. With that, Fujin finally went back to sleep. Creator's Thoughts Training starts from next chapter. Chapter 3, Chapter 3, and the training begins. On waking up the next morning, Fujin looked out of the window, to notice that the sky was still dark. He thought, whoa, I woke up really early. Seems like it's just 5 a.m. yet. Oh well, I basically slept the whole day yesterday, little wonder I woke up so soon. Anyways, I suppose I'll have to make a habit of it if I really intend to get strong. On the plus side, the damned headache has finally gone away. He got out of his bed, to notice that Iki and Daisuke are still fast asleep. Not expecting little kids to wake up anytime soon, he freshened up and got out of his room. He then walked out of the orphanage building. The orphanage had a decent size playground for the kids towards the north side. Whereas, on the east and south sides it had a lot of trees which looked sort of like a mini forest. It seems that Kanaha has a lot of such mini forests throughout the village. And many such areas were used as training grounds for ninjas. Luckily or unluckily, there wasn't any such training ground in the vicinity of the orphanage. The western side had residential areas, and had a market a few hundred meters away. Fujin thought, the forest could potentially provide me some cover and privacy. While it's probably not the best place, it does provide me with an option to do some secret training. Other than that, I'd also need to see if and when I could have my orphanage room all to myself. Anyways, I suppose I should start with some warm-up and see how much this body can be pushed. Finally ending his train of thoughts, Fujin started to stretch his body in order to loosen up the muscles. After around 10 minutes of stretching, he started to run around the playground. In his estimate, the circumference of the playground was around 100 meters. He was able to complete the initial few rounds with ease, but soon started getting tired. After pushing himself to the limit, he was able to complete 28 rounds around the playground. Taking deep breaths, he thought, wow, I ran nearly 3 kilometers. There's no way I could have ran even a kilometer at 5 years old in my previous life. And I don't recall this guy doing any exercises before I took over his body. I wonder if it's due to the bodies of the people in this world being much stronger, 
or if me unlocking Chukram made the body stronger somehow. I'm guessing it's the former as I just unlocked Chukra yesterday. All right, I'll take a short break and get back to it. After taking a short five minutes break, he continued his exercise by doing push-ups. He managed to do two sets of push-ups, each with 12 reps. It was followed by sit-ups, for which he could do four sets of 1-5 rep. Next he did squats and managed to do three sets of 12 reps. And lastly, he did pull-ups, of which he could only do eight reps barely. This exercise did push him a lot, but he didn't push them to the limit as it have been detrimental to push the body to its limits suddenly. Done with the exercise, he returned back to the orphanage, had a bath, and put on new clothes. He returned to the room to see that it was 7.30 a.m., and his roommates were still fast asleep. He thought, interesting, I wonder when they wake up and if the time they wake is consistent. If they wake up only at 8, when breakfast is provided, then it could potentially give me the opportunity to practice leaf concentration early morning without letting anyone know. I should observe them for the next week to confirm it. He sat down in his bed, and took one of the leaves he had brought up while coming back from his morning exercises. Staring at it he thought, there are five basic natures that can be mastered, fire, wind, lightning, earth, and water. In order to know my nature affinity, I'll need that chakra paper, but either way, all five natures can be mastered by every ninja. In the fourth great ninja war, Shikamaru had every ninja perform the earth style, earth wall jutsu. This implies that the most basic jutsus of the five natures could be used directly without mastering the element like how Naruto did. However it'll be even better if all five natures are mastered, that would allow more powerful jutsus of all those elements to be used. Given how proficient Hiruzen was, I guess he had mastered all the five natures. I do wonder what my nature affinity is though, as that element would become much easier to master. If I were to choose, my first preference would be lightning. It provides deadly attack, and if I could somehow replicate the way the Rakages used the lightning to boost their speed, power, and defense, then I'd easily reach cage level in strength. The next preference would probably be water. While I ain't a fan of water nature, Kanaha should have the legacy of Tobirama and his water-style jutsus. If access to them is gained, it can allow my power to reach cage level 2. The remaining three have their issues. While wind style is very deadly and versatile, there isn't a single cage level character who reached that stage thanks to his wind style jutsus. Even those Kazakages weren't wind users. The only one I can remember is Danzo, and he was just ridiculous in that fight against Suzuki. Then again, becoming the first ninja to become cage level by using wind style sounds fun. Earth style has good jutsus too and is probably the best nature after lightning, but almost none are used by Kanaha ninjas, so getting access to them will be tough. While for fire style, Though Fire Style had a few jutsus that seem to be very powerful, but it seems that almost all of them are very easy to dodge. The only top tier fire jutsu I remember is Amaterasu, which I sadly can't use. Only Madara's Majestic Flame Destroyer seemed deadly and could be used by all, but I'm not sure if it'll be available with Kanaha or not and whether a normal ninja could release that huge flame which Madara did. Still I guess I should be open-minded as there may be many more jutsus here than was shown in Naruto series. Either way, there's not much of an option right now. Of all the five natures, I only know the proper training method for wind nature as it was covered properly. The training for remaining natures will just be a wild guess for me. So probably best to delay their training till academy starts. Until then, I'll master the wind nature irrespective of whether it is my affinity or not. Fujin then channeled his chakra, and tried to cut the leaf into two. The training continued without any success for half an hour, when a bell rang throughout the orphanage. The bell signified that breakfast was available. Iki and Datasuke woke up as soon as the bell rang. Looking at Fujin sitting on the bed, Datasuke said, Morning, you woke up early. Fujin replied, Morning. I had slept too early, probably that's why. Ika then said, Good morning, it's nice to see you ain't screaming today. 
following which, both Daisuke and Ika laughed at Fujin's expense. Fujin showed an embarrassed expression and replied, Yeah whatever, I'll head down for breakfast. Make sure you two sleepyheads come down before it's all over. On hearing this, both Iki and Daisuke ran to grab their toothbrush. Over the next week, the same pattern followed. Fujin woke up early, did morning exercises, and noticed his two roommates seemed to only wake up when the bell rang. And whenever he had the opportunity, he tried to cut the leaf. He also added practicing punching and kicking in his morning exercises. He noticed that Iki and Daisuke were mostly out playing with everyone else. So the room was empty most of the time. This was especially true after morning breakfast, around 10 am noon, and a few hours before dinner, around 4 to 6 pm. With that information, he finally started practicing the leaf concentration exercise in order to improve his chakra control in that period. Here, a leaf was placed on the forehead, and all his chakra is directed onto the leaf, using it as the focal point. Along with improving chakra control, it also aided in improving concentration. Fujin recalled Naruto remembering its importance while mastering Rei's Nan. Fujin not participating in playing with other kids was suspicious, but thanks to the fact that the orphanage was already overcrowded, no one paid much attention to him. The screaming and falling unconscious event was long forgotten. Only his two friends were upset that he didn't play with them much any longer. In order to prevent any more suspicion on him, while doing the leaf concentration exercise, Fujin used to sit on the bed in such a manner that his back faced the door. If anyone abruptly entered the room, he'd instantly stop the exercise and make the leaf isn't visible to anyone entering the room. Luckily for him, there wasn't much interference. Chapter 4, Chapter 4, Progress Over the next six months, Fujin followed the same routine. His physical fitness, concentration, and chakra control steadily growing. He also noticed that it also resulted in a significant increase in his chakra reserves. Sadly with nothing to compare, he had no idea how good or bad his chakra reserves were. On the physical side, he was able to run almost 50 rounds of the playground now. He was able to do 4 sets of push-ups with 12 reps, 5 sets of sit-ups with 20 reps, 5 sets of squats with 15 reps and 4 sets of pull UPS with 8 reps. He noted that it was much easier to improve physically here as compared to the previous world. When it came to wind nature training, it took him three and a half months to successfully cut one leaf, and only after six months of nature training, he was finally able to successfully cut the leaf in one go without any issues. While it did take very long, it was understandable due to quite a few factors like Fujin just having unlocked his chakra, with him not having any shadow clones to assist or a great teacher to guide him. As he couldn't cut off a waterfall to complete the next stage, he just tried cutting tougher materials to improve wind nature further. He replaced the leaf, with a small piece of wooden twig and then branch which were lying around. One lucky instance happened in the fifth month he was in this ninja world. An old couple visited the orphanage and distributed a lot of water balloons in the orphanage. Such instances used to happen frequently, Fujin guessed that they probably were people who lost their children in either the war or Kurama assault. But this time it was very beneficial for him. Since he was an orphan and didn't have any access to money, it meant that he couldn't go to the market to buy water balloons to begin Raisin Gan's training. He took the opportunity to get a few water balloons and hit a few. With access to water balloons, he finally began the stage 1 of the Rays Nan training. While chakra shape manipulation was tough, recalling the way Naruto popped the balloon, Fujin was able to replicate the way to manipulate his chakra to apply pressure everywhere in just a couple of days. However, he wasn't able to pop the balloon. He thought, I guess my chakra reserves are too low. I should be able to pop it if I can use more chakra. Oh well no point in worrying about it right now. But it's probably a good idea to keep practicing this as it'll help improve my skill at shape manipulation. A couple of months later, Fujin became six years old and eligible to attempt entering the Ninja Academy. The entrance exam for the same was still two months away. 
Upon inquiring further about the entrance exam and its contents, he understood that the entrance exam was rather standard. It was mostly centered around the physical fitness of the candidates and they inspected their chakra to decide whether the candidate has the potential to be a ninja or not. Fujin was rather confident in clearing both, so he wasn't much worried. He just continued his usual routine, though he added throwing wooden shurikens to his training routine. In the afternoons, he started to go into the mini forest, he marked tree stems and tried to hit it accurately with wooden shurikens. This was done in case they added shuriken throwing to the entrance exam. Sadly the orphanage didn't have any shurikens to borrow, and being an orphan meant that Fujin had no money to buy them. So the wooden shurikens were made from small branches of trees in the forest by using wind nature to cut them. The carving of wooden shurikens also helped to increase chakra control while using wind nature. Still the shurikens weren't perfect, but that was the only option he had for now. Fujin also had another idea, he thought, I have all the basics down, so passing the entrance exam shouldn't be much of an issue. However I wonder if I should start attempting to improve my physical capabilities by aiding them with chakra. I know that chakra could be used to boost speed by concentrating chakra into the legs, similarly the power of punches can be increased by gathering chakra in your fists. I need to experiment on whether I could do more push-ups and other exercises if I do them while using chakra to assist those exercises. With those thoughts, Fujin began his experiment. He noticed a significant rise in speed and power, when using chakra to perform those activities. However there were many issues. The first being that it was too inefficient and a lot of chakra was being wasted. The second issue being that it required a lot of chakra something his current reserves couldn't handle. So Fujin decided to modify his morning exercises. He decided to keep doing what he has been doing so far, but once he was done with it, he repeated his exercise, only this time doing them with the aid of chakra. And this benefited him immensely, increasing his physical capabilities, his ability to use chakra and also noticed a rise in the speed at which his chakra reserves grew. He began wondering why his chakra reserves suddenly started growing at a faster rate. Upon analyzing, Fujin came to a conclusion, I think that it is rising due to the fact that I've been exhausting my chakra on a daily basis. Each time I do that, it probably increases my chakra reserves slightly. If my analysis is right, then currently I have two means to increase my reserves. The first being to increase it with a combination of physical exercise and meditation, and the second method being by exhausting my chakra to its limits over and over. I wonder if there are any other means as well. Chapter 5, Chapter 5, Academy Entrance Exam Around two months after Fujin turned six, the Academy Entrance Exams were conducted. Waking up early, Fujin freshened up, and prepared to leave for the Academy. For the first time in ten months, Fujin hadn't done his morning workout. He waited for Daisuke and Ika to get ready as they too were planning to participate in the exams. In all, around seven boys and two girls from his orphanage were taking the academy exams this year. They all left together, along with the caretaker Momonosuke from the orphanage. Once they reached the academy, all the kids were surprised at the vast number of children that had gathered to take the exam. A girl named Naomi exclaimed, What? There are hundreds of participants here. Momonosuke then said, probably over a thousand. Last year there were over 1,600 kids attempting the exam. However only around 330 were selected as all the kids looked at him. Fujin thought, I didn't expect this. So many participants and so many selected. I guess Kanaha is trying to fill the void left by deaths during the Third War and Kurama assault. Oh well it doesn't really affect me in any way. On looking around, Fujin saw some groups within the crowd that wore Kanaha headbands. Momonosuke looking at Fujin commented, they are trained ninjas from various clans in our village and are probably accompanying their children. Probably all of them will pass the exam. Hearing that, all the kids tensed up a bit. Looking at that, Momonosuke chuckled and attempted to cheer them, but you shouldn't worry so much. Majority participants aren't from clans. 
so you have a good chance to pass. Just give it your best. The other kids nodded nervously. At that time, someone wearing a Chuyunan vest approached the crowd and announced to the crowd that exams would begin shortly and all kids were to gather at the training ground behind the academy. After coming to the back of the academy, Fujin's whole group took a look at the Hokage Rock, which had the faces of all four Hokage carved in it. Everyone was awestruck by it. Fujin thought, while I did see it from a distance, but up close it looks magnificent. I do wonder if it serves a bigger purpose than just something that just looks good. Inside the academy, in a conference room, a few Chun Nins, most of whom were teachers at the academy, were sitting and discussing the entrance exam. A Chuyunin then got up and gave a report to the one leading the meeting. Nara Kisho looked at that report and sighed. After Third Great Ninja War, the Third Hokage had assigned him to supervise the entrance exams. And he was told to pass as many students as possible as Kanaha had lost thousands of ninjas during the war. He was promoted to a special Jounin post the war due to his contributions. He sighed again and thought, what a drag. Looking at the report, he found that this year, 2,147 children were participating in the entrance exam. Around 30% more than the previous year. He thought, oh well, first let's just eliminate the physically unfit ones. And gave the assigned Chuyunin the signal to start the exam. Doi Masashi, was the one assigned with the first phase. He announced loudly, everyone, the first phase of the exam will begin. You have to run five laps on the path marked Indiana the training ground. Each lap is around 500m everyone will be monitored during this run. I will run in front of you and you will have to follow me. With that he disappeared and appeared on the track. Everyone reached out to where he was. Masashi started running and everyone followed. Fujin thought, well this seems very simple. I could run this many on the very next day I transmigrated here. And after 10 months of training, yesterday, I managed to run over 8 kilometers and could push myself to over 10 kilometers if I used chakra. Everyone completed the first three laps, however, slowly a few started dropping out. By the time five laps were completed, everyone in Fujin's group, except Fujin himself, were tired. One girl and two boys couldn't complete the five rounds. Masashi announced loudly, all those who couldn't complete the five laps are eliminated. They are to return to the front of the academy and can return to your guardians. He continued, among the ones still left, you have two options. First, is to run another five laps. If you don't think you can, then return to the front of the training ground and wait there. Many decided to return to the training ground, but a few hundred still continued. In Fujin's group, only Daisuke and another guy, Tatsuya, attempted it. After compiling the data, Narakisho noted, 438 participants couldn't complete five laps, and only 257 attempted to do the next five laps. Among the 257, 241 participants completed the five additional laps. The ones who couldn't complete the laps were sent to the group of students waiting in the training ground. For the remaining 241, the same two choices were provided again. Only 21 participants decided to attempt another five laps. The ones who didn't attempt were sent back and gathered in a different group as compared to others who stopped after only five laps. Fujin was now the only one left from the orphanage. Most remaining were from clans. All the 21 were able to complete the additional 5 laps and they were placed together in a different group. Now the training ground was separated into 3 different groups. Fujin was glad that they weren't asked to do 5 more laps, or he may have had to back out. After that more physical tests were conducted and more participants were eliminated. Nara Kisho noted, all the 21 and 220 participants from the two groups passed, but many from the first group were eliminated. Only 636 from first group were still remaining. After the first phase was done, the participants were given a break and provided breakfast. After breakfast, the examiner for the second phase appeared. Fujin noted that he was from the Hyaga clan. 
he announced, in each of the group, the ones who have unlocked chakra step forward. All except one from Fujin's group moved forward. In all there were almost a hundred kids who had unlocked their chakra. Everyone who was from a ninja clan had their chakra unlocked. Fujin sighed in relief as he saw a lot of civilian kids step out too. So him unlocking chakra won't be very eye-catching. The Hayaga activated his Byakugan and examined the chakra of the ones who stepped forward. He had to check for the amount of chakra and its quality. All the twenty from Fujin's group passed. Of the remaining, sixty-four students were passed too, whereas others were disqualified. Then, a few Chuyunans then moved around and helped all the remaining students to unlock their chakra. Fujin was surprised, wow, I didn't think they'd help everyone unlock their chakra. Kanaha must be really desperate. That said, it's obvious that not all of the kids here will pass. So the direct effect of this move will be that there will be a lot of civilians who will have access to chakra. I wonder if these people serve some purpose. And how many more such people exist in Kanaha? While the process of unlocking chakra was ongoing, Narakisho was observing the situation. Looking at him, the examiner for the second phase, Hayaga Hakairo, walked to him. The Hayaga said, I'm surprised that the third ordered to have all these kids unlock their chakras. Narakisho nodded and replied, Yeah, he doesn't have much other option. We lost too much in the past few years. In the past couple of years, he ordered training of the reserve genins, to replace the dead, however even that's not enough. And while most of the kids here won't become a ninja, but with chakra enhancing them, they'll help fill many other roles in the future. Honestly, I'm impressed by the efforts the Hokage took in order to ensure that so many kids attempted the exam. Even the capacity of the academy has been increased. Hayaha Hakairo replied, yeah. We just need a few years without any major conflict. Kisho dejectedly replied, Yeah, but these exams are gonna be a pain in the ass till then. Hayaga Hakairo laughed seeing the Nara's annoyance. The process of unlocking and examining chakra went on for a while. It was evening when it got completed. In all, around 430 kids were passed. Remaining 447 kids failed and were asked to return to their guardians. The ones who passed were gathered together in the training ground. A few kids then saw that an old man with a smoking pipe was walking towards them. Fujin looked to his left, oh, finally I'm gonna see someone from the story. To think that the first person I recognized would be Hiruzen himself. Chapter 6, Chapter 6, Hokage's Speech and New Home On seeing the third Hokage, everyone got respectful and serious. Most kids were surprised that he came to meet them. He looked at the kids and smiled gently. He began his speech, Congratulations to all of you for passing the entrance exams. And took a pause. All the kids were very happy and excited to finally enter the ninja academy. The surrounding Chuyunans asked for silence to be maintained and let Lord Hokage speak. Fujin however thought, Here it is. I guess I'll finally experience his legendary skill of influencing young kids. In my previous life, everyone talked about Naruto's talk no jutsu. But no one ever talked about how Hiruzen influenced Naruto to work hard and risk his life to protect the very people who made his life miserable. The third continued, Now that you have entered the academy, we'll teach you the ways of Akanaha Shinobi. We'll ensure that you guys become full-fledged Shinobi of the Hidden Leaf Village. This academy was created by Lord Second Hokage. He himself taught a lot of students in the academy, including me. I still remember the fun and battles we had in the academy. The ninjas who pass out of the academy all ensure that our village stays safe and peaceful. They ensure that you stay protected. And soon it'll be up to you to carry forward that will. The will of fire as Lord First Hokage used to say. Now you will be the ones who will carry the will of fire in you. Love your village and ensure that your will of fire preserves peace and prosperity. Carry on the will of fire in you brighter than anyone else. And let every other village know that the will of fire still burns brighter than anything else. Have a mind that will not yield, able to endure hard training and work. And, 
be healthy in mind and body. And with that, I welcome you future ninjas to our academy. As soon as the speech ended, the excitement that was bubbling within the kids finally popped and all started celebrating. The day was finally called off and everyone started to return home. After reuniting with his fellow orphans, Fujin found out that only four kids passed. Even Ika failed. Only Fujin, Daisuke, Tatsuya, and Naomi passed. Momonosuke comforted the ones who failed, mentioning all the other things they could do when they grow up. And all of us returned to the orphanage. There were still three days for the academy to open, however those days were busy for Fujin and the other orphans who passed. The orphans who passed the entrance exam, would no longer live in the orphanage. They were provided with a small apartment in the residential areas which would be rent-free until they became a ninja, and would also be provided with a small stipend to support themselves. Fujin thought, oh, I didn't know about this. I knew Naruto lived alone later on, but I thought he might have been given special treatment due to his circumstances. I do wonder what the aim is by asking us to live alone. I guess the main advantage I can see is that this way we would be better prepared if we had to go on a solo mission outside the village. After packing up what little clothes he had, he got out of the orphanage and looked back at it. He saw that Daisuke was very sad and even crying as he and Ika won't be together any longer. Fujin thought, well it's not really like I developed much relationship with anyone here. Naruto isn't in this orphanage so there's not really much point in staying here anyways. All four orphans were accompanied by the orphanage caretaker to their new apartments. After dropping the other three off, Fujin was the last one to reach his apartment. He thought, so this'll be my new home for the next few years. The apartment was properly cleaned and very neat. While the rooms were small, they were more than enough for him. It had a small living room, a bedroom a very compact kitchen and washroom. There weren't many gadgets in the home apart from a fridge, cooking stove, and other stuff needed for cooking. There was also a sofa in the living room and a bed and an alarm clock in the bedroom. He also saw a first aid kit. He thought, oh well, this is pretty neat. The bed's better than the one at the orphanage. Also here I should have much better privacy. So I can use the whole day to train in some way or other. I do wonder what food will be available here. They did say that someone would come here around noon and deliver the food for today as well as the stipend. Anyways finally getting access to money will be convenient. I ran out of water balloons a month back, so Ray's Nan training has been on a hold. I need to buy them. Also, I should definitely try Ichiraku Ramen. Like heck anyone who watched Naruto wouldn't want to try it. I also need to fill up the fridge. We won't be provided with breakfast from now on. So I should at least buy some eggs, bread and milk. Ending his train of thoughts, Fujin set up an alarm for 11.30 a.m. and began practicing leaf concentration. At 12.15 p.m., there was a knock on the door. Fujin opened the door to see an academy teacher who was monitoring the exam yesterday. He introduced himself as Adachi Genki and said that he'll be Fujin's class teacher for this year. He asked about whether Fujin was comfortable here and if there were any issues. On confirming that everything was all right, he said that's very good to hear. I saw your performance yesterday, you did very good. Keep it up. Fujin replied, thanks. After that he provided Fujin with his stipend and then provided him with a few ration bars. Fujin looked at those bars and asked, what's this sensei? Genki smiled and replied, these are ration bars, you'll consume one for lunch and dinner. There is enough here for a week. From here on though, you'll have to collect the ration bars yourself from the academy on every Sunday. Fujin looked plainly at his sensei as if to say, really? Freaking ration bars? Genki saw the look and said dismissively, don't look down on them kid. That's the food of ninjas. They were created after doing a lot of research. Even the legendary Sunans, Tsunade, and Orochimaru, worked on this. They provide a ninja with proper nutrition. So take pride that you are eating food specially made for ninjas. Fujin saw his sensei explaining to him like he would explain to any small kid. 
In order to not make his sensei suspicious, he acted as a kid, first showing confusion and then being a bit prideful that he's eating food made for ninjas. Genki smiled, and took his leave. On his departure, Fujin sighed. He wondered, which moron is responsible for providing food to orphans? Seriously? A ration bar? No wonder all Naruto ate was ramen. Oh well whatever, it should provide the necessary nutrients and is easy to preserve for a long time. And I definitely need to learn some cooking. No way in hell am I eating ration bars for years. He then counted the stipend given to him. There was 1000 Ryo provided to him. He thought, well I know that Ryo is the currency here, but I don't know whether this is a lot or not. I just kept training and didn't even ever go to the shopping area near the orphanage. I really need to go out and understand the prices here. I also need to find out the costs of shurikens, kunao, senbon, swords, explosion tags, scrolls and other important stuff. Though I suppose there's no need to worry about that just yet. The most immediate thing to buy would be chakra paper. He ate a ration bar. While it didn't taste bad, it didn't taste good either. He noted that orphanage food definitely tasted better. After that he left his apartment, locked his door and went out. After asking for a bit, he found the marketplace. There he went around checking the price of various stuff. He found out that one dozen eggs cost 24 ryo, one liter milk cost 9 ryo, and a packet of bread slices cost 5 ryo. One kilogram meat cost 60 ryo. Various vegetables and fruits cost in the range of 10 to 20 ryo. He thought, I see, the 1000 ryo are more than sufficient if used just for this stuff. He looked around and also found a weapon shop. A set of six shurikens cost 2000 ryo, whereas kunao cost 1000 ryo each. A set of six senbon cost 1000 ryo, and swords were much more expensive, its price varying depending on the quality. He thought, these are expensive. I'd have to save for a long time to afford these. After that, he asked the shopkeeper whether they had chakra papers. The shopkeeper nodded and Fujin bought one for 100 ryo. Finally ending his short trip, he bought a dozen eggs, one pack of bread slices, one liter milk, a few fruits, twelve water balloons, three rubber balls, items for daily use like soap, toothbrush, and paste and so on. Excluding the cost of the chakra paper, he spent around 80 ryo on that journey. And he wouldn't have to worry about breakfast for the next few days. On reaching home, he channeled his chakra through the chakra paper. The chakra paper split right through the middle. He sighed, it ain't lightning. Well whatever, wind is pretty good too. Also I've already started training in it. Next day, the training continued, but in the evening, after asking a few strangers, he finally reached Ichiraku Ramen. Tuka became the second canon character Fujin saw. He ordered Miso Ramen, which cost 45 ryo. After eating it, he thought wow, it tasted delicious. Still though, 45 ryo is pretty expensive for me currently. I won't be able to visit here frequently. Satisfied with the food, he returned back to his home. Creator's thoughts. There wasn't much information available on the prices. So I made that stuff up. Academy life begins from next chapter. Chapter 7, Chapter 7, Academy starts. Today was the day the Academy finally started. Fujin woke at 5 a.m., freshened up, and went through his morning workout. After completing it and having a bath, he ran to the Academy. The academy started at 8 a.m. He was assigned to class 4A, on the fourth floor. On entering the class, he saw that quite a few had already arrived. There were over 25 students already in there. He entered and sat on one of the unoccupied benches. He noticed that most of the people in here were from the ninja clans. They wore the crest of their clan on their backs. Fujin wondered, this classroom ain't big at most 40 would fit in. Does that mean there are over 10 divisions in my year? At 8, Adachi Genki Sensei arrived. 
he first distributed identity cards to everyone. He then introduced himself. On arriving he introduced himself, Welcome to the Academy. I'm Adachi Jenki and I'll be your class teacher for this year. How about we get to know each other first? I'll tell you guys more about myself. I'm a Chuyunin of Kanaha and fought in the previous Great Ninja War. My hobby is to watch drama and I like to teach young kids like yourself, how about you guys start to introduce yourself? And with that all the kids started to introduce themselves. The ones from clans telling their clan with pride. Fujin took the opportunity to understand the composition of his class. The class had 30 kids. Apparently there were two Uchiha, three Hayaga, two each from Nara, Yamanaka and Akimichi, three Inyazuka, one Abarame, one each from Saratobi, Shimura, Kato and Hotaki clans and surprisingly three from Senju and two from Kurama clan. Other six, including Fujin, were normal civilians. After the students were done talking about themselves, Genki started talking again. He said, All right, first I'll explain to you about your position. This year 430 students passed the entrance exam. However you 30 are the ones who have scored the highest. That's why everyone has very high expectations of each of you guys. All of you have to strive to become very good and strong shinobi. That's why an elite like me is assigned to your class. In addition, other teachers too would assist you when required. You will also be provided access to the Academy Library's E&D section. Also, there will be special tests conducted for you guys every six months, which will be monitored by Lord Hokage himself. So work as hard as you can. Everyone was filled with pride after this speech. And also became a lot more attentive. Fujin thought, lucky me. This seems like an elite classroom. I guess I can have any queries resolved quickly. Also those two sections in the library, I guess they should be sections having rank E and rank D jutsus. I wonder if there are sections with higher ranked jutsus, and whether I can sneak in. Well I should give it a proper tour soon. Since this was the first day, Genki gave them a tour of the academy. They were shown all the classrooms, the library, training grounds, canteen area. In training grounds, various areas were shown like running track, obstacle race track, shooting area, balancing area which had a lot of poles and so on. There was also a small pond at the far end of the training grounds. After the tour was over, they went back to the class. Jenki explained to them what all they'll be learning this year. It seemed to mostly be basics. They were supposed to be taught about chakra, hand signs, chakra control, teijutsu, theory of genjutsu, shuriken throwing along with normal stuff like mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, language, history, geography, and civics. After that, the class was dismissed for the day. After the class was dismissed, Fujin left quickly and headed towards the library. However, on the way to the library, he ran into Dasuke and Tatsuya. Dasuke called out to him, Hey Fujin. Fujin turned around to see him, he said, Hey, how are you doing? How was the class? Dasuke replied, It was fun, we took a trip of the whole academy. Fujin replied, Yeah, so did we. By the way, how many students are there in your class? Dasuke replied, Oh? There are a hundred, ain't that the case in every class? Tatsuya joined in the conversation saying, Yup, it is the same in my class. Fujin said, I see. No, in mine there are only thirty students. Dasuke said, Hey, why is that? Not wanting to make him feel bad or having to answer more questions, Fujin said that he wasn't sure. After that Daisuke asked whether Fujin wanted to go home with them. Fujin excused himself saying he had some work. Separating himself from them, Fujin started to go to the library again. En route he grabbed a ration bar and ate it while thinking, I see. So my class has just 30 students, whereas others have a hundred each. So in all there are five divisions. If I were to guess and looking at what all Genki said today, 
our class is probably being trained in the hopes that everyone either becomes a Jounin or at least an elite Chuyunin. Whereas for others, the main target seems to be to boost the Genin reserve and if lucky have a few Chuyunins and Jounins from there. On entering the library, he showed his card to the librarian, and asked for directions. After getting the info, he understood that the library is divided into seven sections. It had a general section having non-ninja related information, section 0 where there was basic information related to ninjas, and sections E, D, C, B, and A sections A, B and C were restricted for me right now. Fujin thought, I see, makes sense. There isn't any S section, but that's understandable that they won't put that high level jutsus out in the open. To be honest, I'm surprised that there is section A anyways, let's go explore it. Fujin skipped the general section and started from section 0. He schemed through the titles of various scrolls to get an idea regarding what was here. He found a lot of basic but important stuff. Information related to chakra theories, chakra control, manipulation, nature manipulation, fuinjutsu, genjutsu, teijutsu were all mentioned here. So was a lot of historical information. He then went on to the sections E and D. There most of the scrolls were just rank E and rank D jutsus. He thought, wow, I didn't expect this. There are literally hundreds of different jutsu scrolls here. A lot of wind style jutsus are available too. And section E has a scroll called Introduction to Fuin Jutsu, whereas section D has a better book on the same. This would be very helpful. It took him more than a couple of hours to just skim through the titles of various scrolls. After that, he went back to section 0, grabbed a scroll named Introduction to Hand Signs. And went to an isolated corner and sat there. There were very few people in the library, so there wasn't anyone to disturb him. Fujin thought to himself, all right, I have seen through the majority of the stuff, now that I finally have some resources, I need to do some planning as to what I should do at least for the next couple of years. Chapter 8, Chapter 8, Plans In a corner of the library, a small kid was staring at a scroll he had opened in front of him. However, unknown to anyone who watched him, his mind was working on something else entirely. Fujin thought, all right, let's first start with what I can do right now. My chakra control is pretty decent thanks to daily leaf concentration exercise. I should attempt something along the lines of tree climbing soon. My chakra reserve also has been developing consistently thanks to a combination of physical exercises and meditation and also due to consistently straining my chakra to its limits. My chakra shape manipulation is going well too. Once my chakra level increases more, I should be able to proceed further. So my plans for chakra control, chakra shape manipulation and increasing chakra reserves should be good enough. Though there's no harm in getting more means of increasing my chakra reserves. The most important thing I have in my arsenal is my wind nature manipulation training. I have already completed leaf cutting months back, and though I didn't attempt waterfall cutting, I have progressed further as I can now cut branches with rather ease. This much should be more than enough to perform many wind-style jutsus. And since my own affinity is also wind, it becomes all the more important. That said, I do wonder if I can make my wind nature more potent by trying to cut tougher materials, maybe like a stone next followed by metal. Oh well, I'll experiment later. Anyways one thing I definitely need to do is learn a bunch of wind-style jutsus. I should read up every rank E and D wind style jutsus in this library, and try to learn the useful ones over the next year or two. Preferably try to find wind jutsus that would allow me to form a good combat system that can allow me to defend, attack and evade. Apart from this, I also need to learn an additional element. Hmm, fire, lightning, earth and water. Which one should I focus on? On analyzing for a few minutes, he thought. All right, lightning and wind isn't really the best combo, so lightning's out for the time being. Fire and water can combine very well with wind, especially fire. But I'll need a shadow clone to use it effectively. And anyways, this is the land of fire, so my teammates are very likely to have this element anyways. 
that leaves earth. I don't think wind and earth combine, however I can stick to using wind style for offense and earth style for defense. I hope this library has that jutsu which Kakuzu used to harden his body. With that jutsu for defense along with wind style for offense should be a very effective and annoying combination. Alright, I'll choose earth as my second element. And I'll keep working on it for the next few years to master these two elements. Other elements can wait till I'm able to pull off multiple shadow clones successfully. Apart from that, basic justice should be learned as well. Normal clones don't provide much help in combat, but they should at least serve as a base for shadow clones and elemental clones. Transformation has a lot of uses though, from disguise to transforming into weapons. Substitution is the most useful of the three, and something I'll keep using even if I became as strong as the cages. So I've to give special focus to substitution jutsu. Alongside this, I'll also have to learn and master shunshin, body flicker, jutsu. Those two techniques will be vital for evasion and running away. Perhaps more than wind style jutsus, these two will be more critical to master first. Yeah, this should become a good combat system. Wind style jutsus to attack, earth style jutsus to defend and substitution and body flicker to evade. The next to work on would be tei jutsu. My daily morning workout has ensured that my physical capabilities are top tier among the current students. Sadly I can't grant any more time for it, so I guess I'll have to increase the difficulty of the workout somehow. Perhaps weights or some seals. As for Taijutsu, the academy teaches its own Taijutsu style. I should check that out before planning further. As for Genjutsu, I can't work much on it right now. Let's leave it for the future. That leaves me with Kenjutsu, Medical Ninjutsu, Sensing Capabilities, and Fuinjutsu. Medical ninjutsu can wait. Kenjutsu is important for me. I will need to learn how to channel my chakra through weapons and charge it with wind nature. That would make my offense very lethal. However, this can wait for the time being too as I won't have to fight anything soon. Fuinjutsu is something I can work on now. With the books for basics available, I should see whether it is suited for me or not. Sensing is pretty essential too. I'll probably need the assistance of academy teachers to understand how to become a good sensor. While I haven't tried it yet for safety issues, I believe focusing chakra in the eyes, nose, or ears should heighten those senses a lot. However, what I'm more interested in is sensing chakras. That ability should be very helpful when I'm out of the village. So let's see. The academy is open from Monday to Friday, with holidays on Saturday and Sunday. And it runs from morning 8 a.m. to afternoon 3 p.m. Mornings are assigned to physical workouts. I get two and a half hours for it. In the future, practice of Taijutsu forms will have to be included here as well. During academy lectures, most training can't really happen. But I wonder if nature transformation can be worked upon. Something like leaf cutting can easily be hidden under the desk. I need to check what's the initial training method for Earth Nature and see whether it can be done in class. Though I hope that Jenki ain't a censor, otherwise he'll catch me and forbid me from doing it. From 3 to 10 p.m., I have time to train. I can eliminate one hour from there for traveling and eating and other miscellaneous stuff. That leaves me six hours to work on basic jutsus, wind jutsus, weapon throwing, foin jutsu, sensing chakra and meditation. Clearly not enough time. So what to do? And he fell into deep analysis again. After calculating for some time, he came to the conclusion, all right, of all these things, meditation is compulsory to do daily. For others, there are basically two options. One is to do these things on different days, and the second is to only focus on a few of these. While the first option sounds tempting, the issue is that with me trying to learn so many different things, would cause me to be less focused on everything and might be detrimental for me. For instance, with me practicing so many things, trying to learn eight inner gates from Guy might be impossible as it requires strict dedication to Taijutsu. Fuinjutsu is also a major issue. 
it should be a very vast concept with a lot of theories to focus on which will take a lot of time to learn. It's probably for the best to only learn it after I can make shadow clones. Sadly, this would mean I can't make some easy money by making and selling explosion tags or storage scrolls. Among basic jutsus and wind jutsus, for the time being, let's put focus on basic jutsus. Once I have got those down, I'll start to focus on wind style jutsus. So for the next few months, the time after academy should be spent on mastering those basic jutsus, shuriken and kunao throwing, sensing chakra and meditation. I currently have no idea as to how to sense chakra. I'll have to dig up theories in the library and consult Jenki. That'll also allow me to know whether he is a sensor or not. For weapon throwing, let's just wait up until that class is conducted. That way I won't increase any wrong habits I have and correct the form required while throwing them quicker. As for those basic jutsus, I can get them easily from this library, I just have to understand the theories behind hand signs and how to perform them properly. It should be covered in the academy soon, so hopefully it won't be an issue for long. With that he stopped thinking for a bit and summarized everything he planned. He then thought, all right. This plan seems to be good enough for now. I should get the required knowledge from the academy soon and can always bug all the senseis if I have any queries. I wonder how strong I'll become after a couple of years of this training. He chuckled, finally starting to read the scroll he had taken. Chapter 9, Chapter 9, Accumulating Knowledge Fujin started reading the scroll. After going through the entire scroll, Fujin summarized, I see. The hand signs are similar to those shown in the manga. There are 12 basic hand seals that are mentioned. The hand signs actually help to mold and manipulate the chakra in a particular manner. However, that's only a help. The ninja still has to actively attempt to mold chakra in that manner. He sighed, this will probably take some time to master. Until this is mastered to acceptable levels, practice of hand signs will be done instead of basic jutsu training. To master the hand signs, I'll first have to practice it, while simultaneously having to mold the chakra in the proper way. Then I'll have to try different seals one after another and change the way chakra is molded according to the respective signs. Only after being able to do that will I be able to start attempting any jutsu. Damn, this is gonna be tedious. Anyways, Apart from the basic hand signs, there were also a few other hand signs. The scroll mentioned hand signs for all five elements and a hand sign for clones. Apparently there were also other hand signs that aren't mentioned here. Oh well, at least the chakra molding part will require proper guidance, so I'll start after it is taught in the academy. And this is just the basics. Later on I'll have to learn one-handed hand signs reduce the number of hand signs required to perform a jutsu and learn to perform jutsus without performing any hand sign at all. I recall quite a few characters were able to do hand signs with only one hand, and many had reduced the number of hand signs required for important jutsus to only one. While he was analyzing the hand signs, his class teacher Jenki entered the library and saw him lost in the scroll. He silently sneaked behind Fujin to see what he was reading. Upon noting the content, he smiled a bit and made his presence known, Hello Fujin. Upon hearing that Fujin suddenly turned behind to see, when did he appear behind me? How long was he here? Not having any answers, he sighed mentally, I put my guard down, this is the ninja world after all. While he may only be a Chuyunin, he is in a whole different league compared to me right now. Well I suppose becoming a sensor could help me to a great degree in such scenarios. Anyways, time to act as a kid and make a good impression. It'll be helpful if I can get more guidance from him. Though he thought of all that, it only required a couple of seconds. He acted to be a bit nervous and said, Good afternoon sensei, when did you come in the library? Jenki laughed and said, I've been here for a while kiddo. You were too lost in your scroll. So what's with your interest in hand signs? Fujin tried to act nervous and said in his childish voice, I heard that some of my fellow classmates are already able to perform ninjutsu. During the exam, 
someone was talking about an Uchiha who was able to breath fire when he was only four. I wanted to learn it too. That's why I began learning about hand signs. Jenki was happy that a small kid was showing so much interest and dedication. He tried to comfort the kid by rubbing his hand on his head and explaining, Ah, that was Uchiha Ataki, he is your senior by a year. And he passed the academy in just a year and became a genin. But don't worry about it, Itaki was an exception. He had already started training from a very young age. And it ain't breathing fire, instead he was using a jutsu called Fireball. You'll start using jutsus very soon too. Tomorrow I'll teach you all about hand signs. So you can practice properly tomorrow. Until then don't try it by yourself. It can cause accidents, okay? Fujin showed an excited face, while nodding and said loudly, Yes sensei. However Jenki quickly said, Hey, this is library, keep your voice down. A slash N, I hope you guys get the mem, lol. Fujin nodded again and softly said, Yes sensei. After that Jenki entered into section B of the library. Fujin thought, Oh, Chuyunins are allowed in Section B? Then again, I'm not sure if this is for every Chuyunin or just a few. He did say he was an elite. So I guess he is an elite Chuyunin, who is probably close to becoming a special Jounin or a Jounin. Well whatever, at least my current impression should be very good, so that's some good news. And Fujin finally returned back to the scroll. He started to try and understand how chakra is molded with each hand sign and got engrossed in it again. After some time, he heard a door open. Fujin looked up to see Jenki exit section B. He smiled at Fujin and exited the library. After trying to understand the hand signs a bit more, Fujin finally closed the scroll and returned it to where it was. He then grabbed the scrolls on wind nature training and went back to the same spot and started reading. After reading it he thought, this was a bit disappointing. All that is mentioned here is the leaf cutting exercise. Waterfall cutting ain't mentioned. Then again it makes sense as not everyone will have Yamato make a platform for them, and not everyone has Naruto's chakra levels in order to make that many clones. The remaining content is mostly about the benefits of leaf cutting exercise and precautions to take. The only useful thing is the deeper explanation of the hand sign for wind nature transformation. He then got up and exchanged the scroll for earth nature training. This one was a bit more comprehensive. Fujin thought, alright this one's more helpful. Apparently, there are two basic ways to master earth transformation. The first one is to crush a stone. This was similar to leaf cutting. And the second one was to mold clay into various shapes harden it and so on using only chakra. It makes sense. Most earth-style jutsus I remember, were basically just moving a part of the ground above the surface. So clay molding will be very helpful. As for stone crushing, after crushing stones, I could try crushing boulders to increase the mastery of earth nature whereas for clay molding, I could just increase the amount of clay or maybe I could try molding mud or soil as it'll be much tougher. He then placed the scroll back, went to section E, and grabbed a scroll on the basics of Fuinjutsu. Upon reading it he analyzed, alright, this doesn't sound too hard. Though I guess the difficulty should increase a lot for later versions. But yeah, this sounds to be too time consuming. Best left for later. He kept the scroll back and started searching section 0 for sensor training. He found many that were based on improving senses of smell or sight or hearing. After searching a lot, he finally found the one he was looking for. Sensing the chakra of anyone in your vicinity. On reading it he found out, I see. So every ninja has a chakra field around them, though not everyone is able to use it properly. However, sensors can not only use their chakra field, but also expand their chakra field for hundreds of meters and exceptional sensors can even expand it for a few kilometers to detect chakra within that field. On the other hand, if this chakra field is retracted, then that can help in hiding from enemy sensors. As for training to be a sensor, the greatest obstacles are the other senses of a ninja. So while training, 
it is advised to shut down the sense of sight, smell, and hearing. Interesting, I wonder if I can shut down just two of them in order to train the remaining one. Good hearing, smell, and eyesight would be very helpful in this profession. The basic method is still meditation, but sort of done in reverse. Instead of meditating to isolate myself from the surroundings, I'll have to meditate in order to perceive my surroundings. Sadly though, I have no idea how to shut down my sense of smell, and also don't have any gadgets to stop hearing. So I'll require help here. Some guidance could be helpful too. I guess I'll somehow have to give Jenki hints that I want to be a censor. Sigh. He finally kept the scroll and left the library. It was already evening. He thought, wow, I didn't notice the time at all. I guess I was in the library for over six hours. The library didn't have any window at all. Makes sense, they don't want anyone sneaking into the library. Probably the walls are fortified with the help of Fuinjutsu to prevent Earth-style users from breaking in. He went towards his home and on the way, bought a small pack of clay for five ryo and picked up a few small stones. Creator's Thoughts This chapter took a lot of research. Also thanks to folks on Reddit for giving good ideas for various concepts. Chapter 10, Chapter 10, New Skills Next day, again Fujin was the last one to arrive. He came in merely a couple of minutes before 8 a.m. Looking at everyone he chuckled, look at these kids, coming early to sit on the first bench. He went and sat alone on the last bench and removed a stone and placed it in the desk. Jenki arrived at 8, and started the class. The first hour apparently was a lecture. He was talking about the history of the village, the pride that one should have in being a Kanaha shinobi and all such stuff. Fujin classified this lecture as a brainwashing session. Fujin observed the classroom. The two Naras were half asleep. The Akimichis were probably thinking about food. The three Inuzukas were too distracted with their dogs. One of the two Uchihas was very smug for some reason while the two Karama girls were gossiping about something. Others were paying attention. The smug-looking guy was Uchiha Yori. It seems like he wanted to walk in the footsteps of Itaki as he was bragging a lot about how the previous year's best student was an Uchiha who was only seven years old on the previous day. Apparently both the Uchihas could already perform the fireball jutsu. Fujin finally stopped looking around. When Jenki was writing something on the board, Fujin grabbed the stone with his left hand, and started to train earth nature while keeping his hand under the desk. When he channeled his chakra, his whole attention was on Jenki. To see whether he would notice and react. However, there wasn't any visible change in Jenki's expression. Fujin thought, lucky. He ain't a natural sensor. Or he is ignoring me for some reason, though chances of that are pretty low. Whatever, both scenarios are good for me. The lecture went on for an hour. Though Fujin paid some attention, the majority of his attention was on training his earth nature. After the brainwashing session was over, Jenki started explaining to everyone about chakra. And then finally moved on to molding chakra with hand signs. Fujin stopped his earth nature training and paid full attention in the class. The kids from clans however were distracted. They had already been taught hand signs before they joined the academy. That class, Jenki taught everyone about three hand signs and made everyone practice it. He monitored everyone closely. After the lecture was over, he said that in the next three days, he'll be teaching them the remaining hand signs. After that they broke off for lunch followed by a lecture on history. Senjuateru and Hayagahana were answering a lot of questions asked by Jenki in this lecture. Fujin on the other hand stuck to his training while pretending to pay attention in the class. The week went by in a similar manner. Jenki taught all twelve basic hand signs as well as the clone hand sign. He stressed on the importance of learning hand signs properly, which Fujin noted was similar to the notes he read from the scroll yesterday, and asked everyone to practice them at home. Other than this, Jenki had also introduced everyone to the leaf concentration exercise. In normal lectures, Fujin kept practicing on his earth nature training, but if he got bored with it, 
he used to try to use his wind nature to cut the stone instead of crumbling it with earth nature. In week two, Genki held a class to throw shurikens. He first started with a competition between the students to understand where everyone stands. He also had called a few other teachers to help him with this session. Most of the clan kids performed well. The best was tied between Uchiha Yori and Senju Teru. The other Uchiha, Abarame, and Shimura rounded up the top five. Fujin was a bit startled by the serious attitude of Shimura Nobu. He thought, I guess Danzo got a root like training program for the kids from his clan as well. Though Fujin had practiced earlier with self made wooden shurikens, it was barely at acceptable level. For starters, the difference in weights itself reduced the impact of earlier training. Out of six shots, he only managed to hit one on the board. And even that was closer to the edge rather than the center. He was ranked 21st in the competition. Afterwards Jenki met up with each and every student giving them advice. When he reached Fujin, he said, All right, you have a lot of work to do on this. First we'll start from your throwing form. Once we get that correct, you will improve quickly. Fujin nodded and allowed Jenki to correct his posture. And then he tried to replicate the way in which Jenki displayed throwing a shuriken. After Jenki corrected him a few more times. After being satisfied with his throwing form, Jenki moved on to the remaining students. Fujin took this training seriously and practiced it a lot. After that day, his time after the academy was divided into his shuriken throwing practice, which he did in the academy practice grounds itself, right after the academy ended. And after reaching home, he practiced the hand signs, molded the clay and meditated. He tried sensing his environment in the previous week, but didn't have any success at it. So that was left for later. The new thing that he started doing was that Fujin started to practice walking on the wall instead of leaf concentration. This was done as a substitute to tree climbing. Fujin noted that since the walls are uniform, wall walking should be easier than tree climbing. However for now this should be enough. He arranged the cushions properly on the floor so that he won't get injured when he fell on the floor hundreds of times. Walking on walls took a few days to learn. By the end of week two, he pulled that off without falling down. He could walk on the wall as well as stand on the ceiling. The major issue he faced here was the shortage of chakra. However, every day he practiced, he discovered that his stamina was improving. But he wasn't sure how much of that was due to better chakra control and how much was due to increase in chakra reserves. After trying to analyze a bit, he dropped the matter. Assuring himself that it didn't matter as he was making progress anyways. During all those falls, he also learned how to flip himself in the air to properly land on his feet. After the first month in academy, Jenki taught everyone the academy's basic Taijutsu style. It included a lot of forms and moves to make it a comprehensive Taijutsu style covering all areas. But that also meant that it wasn't specialized in anything. However for now, Fujin didn't concern himself with that. This Taijutsu style was obviously way superior to everything he could do in Taijutsu. He was quite surprised and thought, I didn't think the basic style itself would be so complicated and cover all aspects. It makes me wonder how much better Senju and Uchiha Taijutsu styles are. And Hayaga Taijutsu is obviously superior to even them. Well let's first master the academy style. Then I can think about learning a more advanced form of Taijutsu. This will take a lot of time, but luckily I do have a lot of time. After that day, the Taijutsu forms got added to his morning workout as well. The Taijutsu training in the academy went on for over a month just to teach the students everything about that Taijutsu style. Fujin noted that the ones from Senju, Uchiha, Hayaga and Inuzuka clan didn't learn the academy style of Taijutsu. After the Taijutsu lessons were over, the academy students were made to fight among themselves every week. And depending upon their performance and technique, Genki gave them tips or asked them to practice a certain form. Even these Taijutsu matches were arranged as tournaments. Here Fujin did much better and was ranked 8th in the first tournament. Though his Taijutsu style wasn't very good yet, 
he did benefit from having a stronger body. He wasn't very surprised by it. Though these students are very talented, maybe some even more than him, no six-year-old kid would put as many hours in training as he did. The ones who do would be rare exceptions, like Guy for instance. Even Rock Lee only started to work that hard after he became a genin. Hayagahoka ranked first in the first Taijutsu tournament. He was followed by Senju Teru, Hayagahana, and Uchiha Yori and the third Hayaga. Shimura Nobu was sixth followed by one of the remaining two Senju at seventh. Fujin thought, well this is promising. Unlike them, I haven't had any proper training yet. As I train further, I should grow stronger a lot faster than these guys. I suppose I am moving in the right direction then, I should just stick to it. Genki started to conduct Taijutsu tournaments and Shuriken throwing tournaments every week for his class. Fujin noted that no such tournaments were arranged for the other four divisions. In fact, in one of his encounters with Datasuke, he learned that they hadn't even had a Taijutsu class yet and are still being taught shuriken throwing and making hand signs properly. He thought, I guess they really are serious in developing this class properly. From what I heard, this was done last year as well. Though they were incredibly lucky to have Ataki in last year's class. If they have similar expectations from this year, then they will be very disappointed. Then again, I suppose they won't expect a talent of Ataka's caliber so regularly. Ending the train of thought, Fujin looked forward towards the future, a bit excited to keep improving himself. Chapter 11, Chapter 11, Improvements The academy life continued in this manner for the first six months. After six months, Genki had to report to Hiruzen on the progress of his class. He reached the Hokage office on the appointed time and knocked on the door. After being allowed in, he entered the room and respectfully said, Lord Hokage. Hiruzen nodded and said, It's all right. How is your class faring? Any talents? Genki replied, It's going pretty well. While it's still too early to say, I believe the majority of these kids will become elite among Chun Nins, and few probably will become Jounins. Senju Teru and Uchiha Yori have been showing the most talent, as expected from someone of their clan. Hayagahoka and Hana have also been performing really well. Shimura Nobu is also pretty good. The remaining three from Senju, Uchiha, and Hayaga clans and the Lona Barame are decent as well. Among the civilians we've had a surprise. The orphan, Suzuki Fujin, has been progressing pretty fast. I've spied a little on him, he is very diligent and works very hard. He is definitely someone we should nurture for the future. There's another among the civilian kids, Aoki Nori, who is performing very well. The other kids are doing okay. On average, the talent in this batch is higher than the previous one. He said enthusiastically. But then he sighed and said, sadly there's no one like Ataki in this class. Hiruzen nodded and said, that's all right. We can't get someone like Ataki every year. But your report still sounds very promising. If in the next 15 years, we get a dozen Jounins and have the remaining at Chuyunin ranks, then it'll help the village a lot. You've done a good job. Keep it up. You'll be responsible for raising this batch into good shinobi for our village. Genki nodded his head and respectfully said, Yes Lord Hokage and exited the room. After he left Hiruzen thought, looks like we will be having another good crop of shinobi. Still, to think we'd have another diligent orphan. I wonder how his story would turn out to be. The praise that Genki had for Fujin wasn't underserved. Fujin improved a lot in these six months. A lot more than Genki gave him credit for. After all, even he couldn't know the fact that even at his home, Fujin spent most time training in a very planned manner. The most important improvement was in Fujin molding the chakra with hand signs. The speed had finally reached an acceptable speed and he was able to do six random seals one after another consecutively. He decided that it was finally time to start learning the basic jutsus. In earth nature transformation, he managed to crumble the rock. The clay molding was also coming along well. He could now manipulate the clay freely. 
and could partially harden it, but couldn't harden it entirely. Fujin noted that his progress with earth nature was much slower than wind nature. But that was understandable as his affinity was wind. Fujin also managed to create deep cuts and stones using his wind nature. In Taijutsu, he also adapted to the academy style very well. He frequently sparred with Teru, Hoka, and Yori in the academy and now ranked within the top four. Senju Teru in particular was kind of becoming a sparring partner to Fujin. In the tournaments, he also noted that his stamina was very high among his classmates. With only Teru being able to match his stamina. He wondered if this was only due to having a more trained body or was his chakra also higher than others. After all, it made sense for Teru to have higher chakra level thanks to him being a senju. Shuriken throwing was coming around properly too. He was able to hit all six shurikens on the target with his right hand. Though not all used to hit in the dead center yet. But left-handed throwing still needed a bit of practice as he could only hit four out of six with it. He decided to practice till he can consistently hit the dead center with both hands. Then he can try to hit the target while running around. In the weekly shuriken throwing competitions, Fujin had slowly climbed into the top ten. Probably the most surprising thing would be that he was able to pop the water balloon around four months after the academy had started. He moved on to rubber ball, but that was very difficult for him. He felt like it'd be years before he could pop it successfully. The class went on in a similar manner. The enthusiasm of a new academy had died down, however competition between students had increased a lot. A smug Uchiha Yori had turned into a grumpy Uchiha Yori. Though he was good, he obviously was no attacky. In terms of shuriken throwing, he was matched equally by Teru and others were slowly managing to hit correctly with all six shurikens as well. Whereas in terms of Taijutsu, both Teru and Hoka were better than him and Fujin and Hana were at a similar level as him. And even in lectures, Hana and Teru used to outdo him. In all, Teru was obviously better than him and Hana was around the same level. Fujin wondered, does this kind of jealousy unlock Sharingan? Or does it have to be a major impact like the death of someone? Well I do hope he unlocks his Sharingan though it would be helpful to get some experience by sparring with someone with a Sharingan. Those thoughts aside, Fujin had trouble of his own. His physical workouts in the morning were becoming stale. He had grown comfortable to them and didn't know how to make it harder without increasing the time of workout. While saying that he didn't know any method would be wrong, he did know one method, that was adding weights. However he didn't know if restricting your body with weights when he ain't even seven years old would create any problems or not. He had found out about the prices of the weights. After six months of saving, Fujin had saved up over 1,200 ryo and could afford to buy the lighter weights. After thinking about it a bit, he decided to consult Jenki. Unlike other things, there wasn't really much to hide about his physical workouts as he used to do it in the open anyways. Anyone who did a little investigation would have found it out. So one day, after the lectures were over, he asked Jenki for help. He explained his problem to his sensei properly. After thinking for a bit, Jenki demonstrated him a few slightly more difficult exercises. He also helped out to design a new workout plan for Fujin. After seeing the new plan, Fujin thanked his sensei politely for it while thinking, Hmm, this is really helpful. I should have asked him earlier. He actually seemed enthusiastic to help me. But then again, I'm pretty sure that even this will become comfortable for me after a few months. Hence after thanking him, he asked again, Sensei, will it be fine if I make the exercises difficult by wearing weights? Jenki was surprised by the question, he asked seriously, where did you learn about weights? Fujin acted to show that he was nervous and said, UMM, I saw a weapons shop in the market when I was shopping. I saw the weights in that shop. Jenki understood and then explained, I see. Well it's good to be curious, but don't use weights for training. They'll affect the growth of your body and it'll be bad for you in the long run. He then put up a kind smiling face and said, it is very good that you asked me. Next time you have any such ideas, 
ask me before trying, okay? Fujin nodded. Then after thinking for a bit he asked, Sensei, then is there anything else I could use to make the workout tougher? Jenki was a bit surprised by Fujin's obsession in making the physical workouts tougher. He thought, Fujin was genuinely happy with the new plan, and yet he still keeps asking me these questions. Does that mean that he is thinking that this new workout will soon become easy for him? That's surprising. I knew he was diligent, but not this much. Now he makes me really look forward to his future. Jenki then said, actually there is another way. Instead of weights, you can have some seals do the same work without having any disadvantages. Like a gravity seal. Fujin was surprised with this information. He thought, I guess I really need to learn Fuinjutsu. He showed an enthusiastic expression to Jenki. Jenki was happy with the enthusiasm Fujin showed and decided to play a little trick on him. Jenki continued, however these seals can't be given to anyone. Also they are very expensive if you try to get them, so you can't get them by yourself. Fujin was instantly confused. He frowned a bit and wondered, what's he playing at? I think he is trying to bait me or something. He decided to play along and then sighed and showed a dejected expression. Jenki was happy with the response he saw on Fujin's face and said enticingly, however don't worry. Do you remember what I said on the first day? that the Hokage will watch your exams. Fujin, still confused, nodded his head. Jenki continued, if you perform the best among your classmates, then you can ask Hokage for a gift. So then you could ask Hokage for these seals to help you. Till then you should stick to the plan I made for you. Fujin finally started to get some ideas. He nodded his head while thinking, is he trying to motivate me to perform good in the exams? by dangling a carrot in front of me. Seeing Fujin nod, Jenki smiled and said while ruffling Fujin's hair, good. But the exams will also have a theoretical part and not only physical exercises. So you have to study theory too if you want to come first. Finally getting what's going on, Fujin said enthusiastically, yes sensei, I'll study hard for the final exam. Satisfied with himself, Jenki finally left. After Jenki left, Fujin laughed a lot internally and then thought, Sigh, it's hard to keep acting as a kid, though there is an aspect of fun in it and damn these adults, trying to manipulate little kids so much. It was the same in my previous life. Everyone just forces little kids to come first in everything they do. Sad part is I actually have to perform well in those exams. Still though, it was very hilarious to watch. Him trying to manipulate a little kid. Sucks for him that I am no little kid. I guess he said that just because I don't participate much in those boring lectures. Come to think about it, I don't think I have ever even answered a single question he asked in class. No wonder he tried to manipulate me. I guess I'll have to improve my pretending to pay attention in class skill. Anyways, I ain't really worried about theoretical exams. While I won't be arrogant to say that I am the smartest person in the room, but my brain is much more mature than theirs. These exams should be very easy for me. That said, the seals do worry me a bit. After all, if someone messes with the seal while putting it on me, it would become very troublesome. I guess I should check up the gravity seal and some suppression seals in the library sometime later. Ending his train of thoughts. Fujin looked again at the new workout plan and walked to the library. Chapter 12, Chapter 12, Defection After entering the library, Fujin first entered Section 0 and searched for chakra control scrolls. After searching for a few minutes, he finally found the right one. After finding a place to sit he opened it up and started reading while thinking, I can now walk on walls even in my sleep. I need to try tree climbing a bit and then move on to water walking if I want to improve my chakra control even further. If anyone asks where I learned these things, I can refer them to this scroll. The scroll mentioned leaf concentration, tree climbing and water walking. However what surprised Fujin was that a scroll was referred to at the end of the scroll which presented a theory to improve chakra control even further. To satisfy his curiosity, 
he searched for that scroll and started reading it. After reading he analyzed, interesting. The scroll proposes a theory that chakra could be used to counterbalance ourselves against the gravity itself. By applying as much force as gravity applies on us, one could float and ascend or descend by applying higher and lower forces respectively. Still though, no one has successfully managed to do this. Even Tsunade in the series didn't have any such skill and her chakra control was the best there was in the whole series. As for others who flew like the third Tsuchikaj and the ones related to him, I think they used Earth style to lighten themselves or something along those lines. I don't recall it properly. Anyways, this is an interesting theory. Maybe I could try it sometime later on. Keeping the scroll back, Fujin finally decided to get to his main task. He went in section E and grabbed the clone Jutsu scroll. On opening it, he found that this Jutsu needed only three seals. They were Ram, Snake and Tiger in that order. He read the scroll further. After reading it he thought, I see. Even though the hand signs are only three, a lot more has to be done internally. The hand signs only act as a guide. So just knowing the hand signs won't be enough to be able to do the Jutsu. Guess that scraps all my plans for Shadow Clone Jutsu. Anyways, I should start learning this Jutsu. After memorizing everything of importance regarding Clone Jutsu, he left the library. He went back to his apartment and started practicing the Clone Jutsu behind closed doors. As expected, the Jutsu was quite difficult. He had to make a couple of more trips to the library in order to read that scroll again. During one such trip he saw Jenki watching him and smiling. He thought, I guess he misunderstood that I'm visiting the library to learn more about history and other stuff he covers in class. Well whatever, it's not a problem to me. He also temporarily scrapped his after academy routine and focused entirely on the clone jutsu. Only after he ran out of chakra would he take a break and meditate. It took three days for him to be able to make his first clone. And he was horrified by it. His thoughts were, I never thought I'd make worse clones than Naruto. Only after a week was he finally able to create a decent clone. He practiced it for another week to get the hang of it and could do it at a much faster pace. After that, he started to learn the transformation jutsu. Transformation was going to be a critical technique for him. He planned to disguise himself in order to train outside in order to ensure that he didn't attract much attention to himself. It also doubles up as training for infiltration missions. In case anyone did catch him, he can use that excuse to get away. It took him a week to pull off transformation jutsu properly to a certain extent. He had transformed into his classmates. However it wasn't entirely perfect. There were still a lot of imperfections and that only in terms of appearance. He hadn't managed to transform his smell and chakra as mentioned in the scroll. He thought, this is tough. Just getting the appearance right is very difficult. I guess I may be able to change the smell after a while, but perfectly replicating someone's smell will be difficult. Then again, if I recall right, even Naruto in Chuyunin exams wasn't able to replicate smell as Kaiba was easily able to identify him due to his smell. So I guess it is rather difficult to pull off. Even the ones who pass the academy aren't expected to learn how to change the smell. I guess I can work around this by transforming into people from my previous life and using perfumes to mask my smell. That way at least disguising as a stranger would be doable. He continued with his practice. However, next morning when he woke up and started his morning workout, he noticed that the environment in the village seemed very tense. Despite it being so early, quite a lot of people were awake. And many ninjas were running around. And most of those ninjas had very solemn faces. Fujin wondered as to what happened. After the class started, he noticed that a few of the kids from clans looked a bit tense. He approached Senju Teru and asked why they were so tense. Teru was surprised a bit and asked, didn't anyone tell you the news? Fujin was now really curious. He asked back, nope, what news? Teru stated seriously, yesterday night, one of the legendary sunans, 
Orochimaru betrayed Kanaha and ran away from the village. He is now a missing nin. Hearing that, Fujin became very serious. After a few seconds he replied seriously, Yeah, that's some bad news. Extremely surprising too. Teru agreed, Yeah. Who would have thought that one of the third Hokage's students would betray Kanaha? I heard that he did a lot of illegal experiments that killed a lot of people. Who'd have ever guessed that someone so respected would have been such a scum? Fujin nodded solemnly and went to the last bench and sat there. He thought, damn it's hard to act surprised when you already know it is gonna happen. Still though, things are happening in a similar way to what happened in Naruto. The results of the third war, attack of Kurama and Minato's death, then Itaka passing in a year and now Orochimaru's defection. I guess the next event would be an attempt by Kumo to kidnap Hinata and the death of Hisashi. That move from Kumo does make some sense. With Minato dead, Orochimaru defected and the remaining two sonins not present in the village. Then again, giving Hisashi to them was really spineless of Hiruzen. Well whatever, I don't really have any power to interfere or all the information about Kanaha's and Kumo's military. Then again, even if I did have the power, I'd have probably ignored it as it doesn't have anything to do with me. Anyways, Orochimaru leaving is definitely some good news. If I had to pick the ones I totally want to avoid before I become strong enough, then Danzo and Orochimaru would be the ones to top the list. With Orochimaru gone, half the danger is eliminated. Now I just need to hope that I don't catch Root's attention. Otherwise life will get a lot more troublesome. That said, I do wonder if, like in Naruto, here too Hiruzen let Orochimaru go or was Orochimaru able to retreat by himself? If it's the former, then that's a huge blame on Hiruzen. How many people died due to Orochimaru just because Hiruzen was too soft to kill his disciple? Heck, even all the deaths caused by Kabuto's impure world resurrection in the Fourth Great Ninja War can be blamed on this bad decision by Hiruzen. Fujin sighed after having that thought. While Fujin wasn't disturbed, and even happy that Orochimaru had defected, almost everyone else in the ninja world was tense. In the Hokage's office, Hiruzen was present with a solemn face. Apart from Hiruzen, Homura and Kohara were also very worried. Danzo was present too. Danzo criticized the Hokage, Hiruzen. You've grown soft. You have let such a huge threat to the village get away. Before Hiruzen could reply, Kohara chided, I agree. Orochimaru has the knowledge of a lot of secrets of Kanaha. If he were to leak anything to our enemy villages, then it'll be a nightmare for us. Hiruzen sighed and replied, It's unfortunate that he chose to defect, but I'm sure that he won't do anything that'll be detrimental for Kanaha. Danzo sarcastically spoke, Yeah, just like you were sure that he won't defect from Kanaha. Not only did he escape from you, he also killed close to a couple of dozen of our ninjas that were chasing after him. And there's no saying what else would he do. Homura tried to calm the situation down, well we can keep arguing about this later. The question right now is what to do right now. With the amount of secrets he was privy to, even the various clan heads are very tense. Danzo stated, we have to mark Orochimaru as a missing nin. Increase his bounty and also send a squad to chase after him and eliminate him. Hiruzen countered it saying, sending any squads behind him will probably just get them killed. And we are very short on manpower as it is. Kohara questioned, but we can't leave him unchecked, can we? Danzo and Homura agreed with Koharu. Hiruzen then said, I'll send Jiraiya to chase after him while thinking, Hopefully he'll be able to convince Orochimaru to return and get back on the right track. Danzo questioned, won't he fall prey to his emotions just like you did? I suggest sending root ninjas alongside Jiraiya. Hiruzen, however not trusting Danzo's intentions, just dismissed it saying, they'll just get in his way. The discussion between the four old teammates continued for a while. In the afternoon, there was a council meeting. All the clan leaders were very tense during this meeting. Orochimaru had worked with all of them at some point, and known many of their clan secrets which would be bad for them if leaked to enemies. 
a few even blamed Hiruzen for having a soft side for his students. The council concluded by labeling Orochimaru as a missing nin, increasing his bounty by 50% and sending Jiraiya to hunt down Orochimaru. The various clan leaders were doubtful whether Jiraiya would really hunt Orochimaru, however they didn't really have any other option. Every other hidden village was surprised and shocked by this news. In Tsunagakur, Raza thought, first Minato and their Jinchuriki's death and now Orochimaru's defection. Are they falling apart? TCH, it sucks that we were hit so badly in the previous war and recovery is so slow due to that bastard Daimyo. Otherwise I'd have definitely taken advantage of this situation. In Kirigakur, Yagura received the reports as well. But he was too busy in Kiri's internal problems to pay much attention to this incident. In Uegakur, the council debated this matter at length. A few suggested that they should use this opportunity to take revenge for what Minato did to them. While some were cautious, wondering if Kanaha was playing some sort of game. At the end, when the discussion came to an end, they asked Onaki what they should do. Onaki said, there's no point in hurrying to do something right now. Even without Minato and Orochimaru, Kanaha is still very strong. And in any case, there's no way that Brad A won't do something. Let's just watch what he does and how Kanaha responds and then decide what to do. On hearing Onaki's decision, one thought ran through everyone present in the council meeting, fence sitter indeed. In Kumagakura though, the fourth Rakage thought very hard about this incident. After discussing with his council, he decided to see if he could take advantage of Kanaha's misfortune. Chapter 13, Chapter 13, Academy Exam While the whole ninja world discussed Orochimaru's defection, Fujin didn't bother with it and kept his focus on his training. After two weeks of training for transformation jutsu, it had finally improved to an acceptable level, though it still had a lot of space for improvement. After that, he began the training for substitution jutsu. This one was much tougher than the other two. It took nearly twice the time to learn this jutsu and master it to an acceptable level. However, it wasn't what Fujin had thought it to be. He thought, the technique is basically just misdirection. The main focus here is noticing your opponent's focus and the instant he loses focus a bit, replace yourself with an object quickly enough so that the enemy won't notice you. It ain't an instant switcheroo. So it won't work against someone much stronger than you or someone having a Sharingan activated. The object actually has to be very close to you, otherwise the Jutsu will become much harder to be performed. Sigh, that makes sense, instant switcheroo would have been too overpowered considering that every academy kid learns this technique. It does have a lot of variations though. Genjutsu Transformation Jutsu can be used to fool the enemy better. Chakra threads could be used to bring an object at a distance closer to you. It also states that a lower form summoning Jutsu could be used to instantly summon the objects around you, while you hightail out of there. Still, though it ain't as overpowered as I thought, it is still very useful. The subtleness of misdirection would be a very important skill to have as a ninja. It could be applied in a lot of scenarios. I should still master it to the point of being able to do it without hand signs. But body flicker jutsu has to be focused much more now. I will also have to learn some wind and earth style escape jutsus. For nearly two months, Fujin kept on attempting these jutsus till he ran out of chakra. This process of training till he ran out of chakra had a marvelous effect on his chakra reserves. They increased considerably during these two months. During these two months, he also searched the library for scrolls on increasing chakra reserves. He found two scrolls very easily. One explained that chakra increased as one experienced physical and spiritual growth, i.e., it could be increased over time by doing physical exercises and meditation. Another compared chakra reserves to muscle. Just like how physical straining your muscles would increase muscles, chakra reserves would increase by straining it. So to increase the reserves, one had to keep using his chakra till he ran out of it. Fujin had been dependent on the above two till now, which explained the rapid growth in his chakra reserves. Apart from that, he also found a few other ways or theories. 
One scroll talked about using nature chakra, i.e., the sage mode, which would increase the chakra reserves and make it more potent for the time the sage mode was activated. Another scroll talked about increasing cellular activity. By making the cells more active, one could extract more chakra out of each cell thus considerably increasing the reserves. It would also help in improving the physique. Fujin was quite impressed with this theory. Sadly the way to increase cellular activity wasn't mentioned. Fujin wondered, I doubt it'll be easy to increase cellular activity. Otherwise this method would be very common. I wonder who came up with this theory. Perhaps I could contact that person in the future. On reading the scroll entirely, he saw the name of the person who wrote this scroll at the end. He was very surprised by it initially and then concluded, makes sense that it was the snake bastard who came up with this theory. TCH, seems like this method is a dead end. Maybe if I raid his bases in the future and get my hands on his research results, I could find the way if I get lucky, though the chances are pretty low to be honest. Otherwise I could try asking Tsunade. Her knowledge of the human body might exceed Orochimaru's. And she was his ex-teammate. It's possible that she helped Orochimaru on this. Sigh, another thing to consider for the future. The other theories were similarly not implementable. Some were not complete, some were detrimental in the long run. Fujin sighed and returned all the scrolls to their place. He thought, I guess my only option is asking Genki. Sadly I don't have a reasonable excuse to explain why I want to increase my chakra level. His first question would be how am I running out of chakra? And I can't tell him that I am practicing the basic jutsus on my own. If told it to him, and he told his colleagues, the word would eventually reach Hiruzen and Danzo. A six-year-old orphan who can perform all three basic ninjutsus, it's a ticket straight into the route. After Fujin had those three jutsus down, he started to again allot time for other aspects. For the past two months, he had decreased his shuriken throwing practice time, dropped clay molding, stopped practicing chakra control and used to meditate only when he was totally drained of chakra. Among those three jutsus, he didn't intend to work much on the clone jutsu as in the future he'll be replacing it with shadow clones and elemental clones. As for transformation jutsu, it was very difficult to completely master. So he just decided to focus on the appearance part. However, for substitution jutsu, he planned to master it completely. To the extent where he could do it instantly without the use of any hand signs. In these two months, he also progressed a lot in earth and wind nature training during the lectures. He was now instantly able to crumble a small stone into soil, and also able to cut a stone into two. In a rather awkward but hilarious incident, his desk was once full of the soil from crumbled stones and he had to silently clear it after the classes were over. After that incident, he stopped crumbling the stones in the class. He wondered what he could do during that time though. Sadly he couldn't think of a suitable replacement for earth nature training. So he just decided to further focus on wind nature and started carrying a small metal scrap into class and started to try to cut it. Over the next few months, he started to go out of his home and roam the streets of Kanaha while using transformation jutsu to disguise himself as a random teenager. He identified a lot of isolated places in the bunch of mini forests within Kanaha and started practicing tree climbing. It was very similar to walking on walls. Only difference being, the rougher surface of the trees. He managed to do it within an hour itself and moved on to water walking. Apart from that, he also read up on the gravity seal and a few suppression seals in the library. Another month went by in a similar manner, leaving less than a month to the final exams. Fujin finally wondered whether to start preparing for the exams, he thought still 25 days for written exams. It's still too early. However after convincing himself a bit more, he sighed whatever, it's my first exam in this world, might as well get it done with. While studying, he did note that the syllabus here was tougher than his previous world. It's probably what would be expected of a 9 to 10 year old kid, and not from a 6 to 7 year old kid. He wondered whether the syllabus in the ending years may actually provide a challenge to him. 
soon final exams were upon the academy students. For all other students, the final exams were only the written part. However for the ones in elite batches, more parameters were added. For Fujin's class, Shuriken throwing competition, leaf concentration competition and Taijutsu tournaments were arranged too. For Shuriken throwing, a board with circles of different size but same center was placed and everyone had to hit it. The points depended on in which circle the shuriken hit, with the smallest circle having highest points and largest having the lowest. In all, the shuriken competition was worth 30 points. Leaf concentration competition was only to see how long one could keep the leaf from falling down. It was worth 20 points. The one who held it for the longest would get full 20 points and the points of others would depend on how long they kept the leaf from falling as compared to him. For example, if the one who held it for the longest hold it for 30 minutes, he would get 20 points, whereas if someone else held it for only 21 minutes, he'd get only 14 points. The Taijutsu tournament was straightforward, with points depending on the rank. It was worth 50 points and the written exam itself was worth 100 points. The exams finally happened. Fujin did get a laugh out of how serious everyone was for the exams. In the written exams, Fujin was confident that he answered everything right. Though he wasn't sure how everyone else performed. Two days after the written exams, the other competitions were to be held. He guessed that they wanted to grade the written papers first, so that Hokage can reward the winner right there. They started the day with leaf concentration. Fujin, as he had already started to practice water walking, was quite confident in this competition. The competition started. The first guy dropped his leaf in merely two minutes. He was from the Inuzuka clan. More than half of the class dropped out within the first four minutes. Fujin could hear the groaning and upset voices from them. After 10 minutes, only 9 students were still competing. After 15 minutes, the only ones left were Suzuki Fujin, Hayagahana, Senju Teru, Shimura Nobu, and Uchiha Yori. Right around that time, he heard Yori groaning. He knew from the exercises conducted in class, that at max the others could go 20 odd minutes. Senju Teru dropped the leaf during the 19th minute, Nobu dropped it at the 21st minute whereas Hannah continued till the 22nd minute. Fujin decided to build up a decent lead for the points he'll be losing in the Taijutsu tournament. Wanting to stop around half an hour, he continued up to 33rd minute before intentionally making a mistake and dropping the leaf. Though he had outperformed his classmates, he wasn't that worried about attracting a lot of attention, as last year, Itaka didn't drop the leaf for freaking two hours and there were rumors that he didn't drop it but was asked to stop performing it. On opening his eyes, he saw a few kids looking at him enviously, and Yori nearly fuming at how outmatched he was in this competition. The next one was the shuriken throwing competition. Yori, Teru, Nobu, Fujin, Hoka, and a couple more scored perfect in this competition. Looking at Yori's fallen face, Fujin noted, this competition is indeed unfair for him. From what I've seen, Yori is able to hit a still target while he is moving very accurately. While he can also hit a moving target on a consistent basis, though not dead center. Sadly for him, the exam wasn't that difficult and hence many others were able to match him. If not, only Teru and maybe Nobu would have been able to match him. In the Taijutsu competition, Hayagahoka ranked first, followed by Teru and Hana. Fujin was ranked 4th and Yori and Nobu were 5th and 6th respectively. Fujin had defeated Yori in the quarterfinals. Admittedly, Yori's technique was superior to Fujin's, however his physique was much weaker. However, in the semis, Fujin lost to Hoka, and in the fight to decide rank 3, he lost to Hana. He noted, damn these Hayagas are tough to fight. Heck. Pure Taijutsu competition against them is completely unfair. Even Teru, though he fought well with his Senju style, in the end he still lost. If I meet these Hayagas in Chuyunin exams or somewhere, I'll be sure to pack a shit lot of explosion tags to fight from far away. Hiruzen had visited to spectate the Taijutsu completion. 
Fujin did note that everyone was much fiercer during the Taijutsu competition, especially Hana. He wondered if that was because it was the exams, or because the Hokage was spectating. With all the exams completed, the teachers allowed the students a small break while they readied the final scores of everyone. Chapter 14, Chapter 14, Results While the teachers were calculating the final scores, all the students were waiting around in the training grounds. Fujin internally laughed while noticing, Wow, some of them are so nervous, it's so cute, ha ha ha. Only the two yawning Naras and Tara look calm. After adding up the scores and cross-checking, the teachers finally came back, led by the Hokage himself. Hiruzen gave another inspiring cum brainwashing speech while praising everyone for their efforts and the display of their talents. After his speech, Genki walked forward and displayed the results on a board. As Fujin expected, he was the one ranked first. The scores of top 5 were, Fujin, 100 plus 20 plus 30 plus 44 equals 194. Hana, 100 plus 13 plus 29 plus 46 equals 188. Teru, 96 plus 12 plus 30 plus 48 equals 186. Nobu, 98 plus 13 plus 30 plus 40 equals 181. Yuri, 95 plus 09 plus 30 plus 42 equals 176. Fujin, looking at his rank, was very satisfied. It was as he expected. However, on taking a deeper look and checking the scores in each individual category for him and others, he was a bit shocked, damn. I'm ranked one only due to the leaf concentration competition. If I didn't build a huge lead there, then Hannah would have outranked me and Tara would have been tied with me. I didn't expect anyone else to get a 100 in written exams. He exhaled a long breath of air in relief, I guess I have been incredibly lucky with the marking system of the leaf concentration competition. Chakra control is where I am much superior to these kids from the clans. But sadly for them, their specialties weren't marked in this manner. Yori and Teru could have easily scored much more if the Shuriken competition was made more difficult. Similarly they'd have been much superior than everyone if Ninjutsu was tested. After all, Fireball Jutsu is a rank C Jutsu. I am sure Genki would have noticed this too. So next year, the marking scheme might be different. Perhaps other exams would be marked similar to the best scorer as well. He concluded his thoughts with, even though I ranked first, I still have much to work on. I shouldn't slack off. Instead I should be intensifying my training. I'm sure these guys would be trained hard by their clans during the vacation. After coming out of his thoughts, he noticed those around himself. He noticed that Hannah and Tara were looking at him with a very aggrieved look. As if he had done them a huge injustice. After a second be realized, that they were probably mad due to the results of the leaf concentration competition. He just decided to ignore them. After displaying the results, Hiruzen wanted Genki to announce the prize. However after looking at Genki, Hiruzen felt as if Genki was looking very grumpy. He began to guess what made him so irritated. Wondering if he could get to hear an interesting story. He decided to ask him later. Genki was really irritated. He thought, this brat. For ten fucking months he didn't answer a single question in the class. Always seemed half distracted. Who knows what the fuck he does with his left hand always under his desk. The one time I tried to check, all I found was a lot of soil under his desk. And now he scores a perfect 100 on written exams? Don't tell me that after he goes home, all he does is study. Right then he felt like the Hokage was looking at him. Seeing Hokage looking at him, he understood what Hokage wanted and quickly announced, All right everyone, be silent for a while. After getting the class's attention, he continued as I had told you guys on the first day, Lord Hokage would come here to watch your performance. However, there's an additional reward for the one who scores the highest in this exam. The best student can ask Lord Hokage for a reward. On hearing this, the civilian kids were surprised. While the kids from clans seemed to already know this. 
Jenki announced loudly, Suzuki Fujin, step forward. Fujin walked forward while thinking, I wonder what are the limits of the reward. Can I ask for private tutoring from him? Any forbidden or rank S jutsus? Or better yet ask for the scroll of sealing? Hehe, <laughs> I wonder what face he'd make if I asked for the scroll of sealing or something like Edo Tensei. Oh well, need to show proper respect now I guess. When Fujin reached in front of Hiruzen, he bowed respectfully. Seeing that, Hiruzen was very pleased. He smiled kindly and said, You've performed really well. I can see that you have worked really hard to be able to rank first in your class. The will of fire burns strong in you. Fujin thought sarcastically, Yeah, right. Hiruzen continued, Ask what reward you'd like. Fujin took a glance at Genki and was a bit surprised at his irritated look. He then looked towards Hiruzen and respectfully said, Lord Hokage, I would like to get seals that can replicate the effect weights have on our physique, but without any detrimental side effects. Hiruzen was a bit surprised by what Fujin asked for. However he soon nodded and said, All right. However it will require some time to be prepared. I'll call you to my office when it is ready. Fujin tried to show a very happy and enthusiastic expression. He said in an excited manner, Thank you very much Lord Hokage. After that he retreated back among the kids. The exams were finally over. Fujin, who had already grown used to the new routine provided by Genki, would finally have better means to strengthen his physique. However before they were dismissed, Genki announced that they would have a class tomorrow. Hearing that most of the kids groaned. Students from other divisions already started their vacations two days back. Genki however tried his best to assure everyone that this will be the last class. Next day, everyone was present in the classroom. Genki arrived and the class greeted him. A few were still upset at being called for class. Genki started by saying, Before we start, I have to say that I am very proud of your performance yesterday. Keep up your hard work and soon you all will be splendid shinobi. Hearing that calmed down the upset ones. He continued, I hope that you guys continue your training in the vacation as well. As for today's class, don't worry, it'll be very exciting for you. I will be talking about what options are available to you guys in the future. That is what type of ninja you can become. After that, Genki started telling them what all options are there in the future. He started with the easiest one to understand, the medic nin. He explained what a medic ninja does and emphasized their importance in a squad. He even mentioned Tsunade in order to increase the interest of his students. He followed it up with various other possibilities like assault ninja, tracking ninja, sensor ninja, hunter nin, infiltration ninja, communication ninja, and so on. He explained the benefits of each and every one of them as well as their restrictions and limitations as well as the risks associated. He also gave a good role model for each option. He also explained about specializing. He explained, Genjutsu, Teijutsu, various elemental ninjutsu, a ninja could become very powerful if specialized in one of these. But having basic capability for the rest is important too. Otherwise you will have a lot of weaknesses. He explained more about them. The lecture continued for two hours straight. Around 10 a.m., Genki finally ended his lecture. He said, All right, with this now you are officially on your vacations. Fujin was very happy with this lecture. He thought, Finally, I got a chance. Many students got very excited and started celebrating. However Genki raised his voice and continued, but, think about what we talked about today. Discuss it with your parents and decide the optimal way for you to train. If anyone has any doubts, they can consult me. I'll be in the staff room till noon. With that he finally ended his class. Many students just ran out of the class. Fujin instead went to the Shuriken training ground and started practicing. After half an hour, he decided to visit Genki. On reaching the staff room, he knocked and entered after being permitted. Genki was the only teacher present. It made sense as vacations had started. Looking at Fujin, 
Jenki was still irritated a bit. However after a few seconds, he let out a sigh and thought, forget it. I guess he is just too reserved to actively participate in class. Fujin was puzzled by looking at Jenki Sai. He called him to get his attention, Sensei. Jenki replied, so, what queries do you want to clear? Fujin replied, Sensei, could you update my workout routine again and also tell me more about those seals and how to use them? Jenki nodded and took a look at his workout routine again. After considering the addition of seals, he made a few changes to the routine and asked Fujin to follow them. He said, All right, follow this plan and if you get comfortable, you can increase the pressure that the seals can put on you. However don't increase the pressure a lot or you can get injured and won't be able to practice for weeks. Fujin nodded, Thank you Sensei. However he still stood there and asked something Jenki would have never guessed. He said, Sensei, I thought about the roles you mentioned during the lecture. And I'm really interested in being a sensor. So can you tell how I should train for it? Jenki was really surprised by this request. Not able to understand the reason, he asked, Why do you want to become a sensor? Fujin replied confidently, Sensei, if an enemy sneaks up on me or my team in the future, being a sensor would help me save all of us. Also I'll be able to detect enemies from far away and prevent us from falling into any ambush. That's why I wanted to become a sensor. After finishing, Fujin smirked internally. Jenki was surprised a bit by the answer. All the stuff that Fujin just said, was what he himself had said in class. He thought, no wonder he scored full in written exams. But still, something doesn't add up. He seems a bit too interested in becoming a censor, it's not something that can happen in merely two hours. It's as if he knew about censors beforehand. He asked, since when did you want to become a censor ninja? Fujin wasn't ignorant of the fact that Jenki could have found this request a bit suspicious. He acted to show that he was nervous, and said, Um. I wasn't aware of censor ninjas until today's lecture. He then sheepishly rubbed the back of his head while saying, However I was thinking along those lines from the day you snuck up on me in the library. If it was an enemy, he could have killed me without me even knowing what happened. Jenki was stunned by the reply. I never thought that a simple incident as that had such an impact on him. And that was merely his first day. Sigh. Whatever, I guess I'm the one to blame for this obsession of his. He then replied, I am not a censor, so I won't be able to help you with this. Hearing that he saw a dejected look at Fujin. Fujin was thinking, oh please, not another trick again. I don't want to wait till next year's final exam. However, Jenki had good news for Fujin. He continued, However, I have a good friend who is a censor and is in the censor division of Kanaha. I'll ask him to train you over the vacation. I hope you don't have any other plans for the vacation. Fujin put up an excited expression, while thinking, Oh, I do have a lot of plans, not just for the vacation but also for the next year or two, and said, No sensei. In an excited manner. Jenki smiled and said that he'll pick up Fujin tomorrow at 8 a.m. Fujin then took his leave. Chapter 15, Chapter 15, Censor. Next morning, Jenki showed up at Fujin's house at 8 a.m. After picking him up, they went to a training ground. Fujin saw that a middle-aged man, probably in late 20s or early 30s was waiting. He noticed that the man had Yamanaka crest on him. He thought, should have guessed. In Kanaha, they are the best censors. Jenki approached him and said, Yo. This is the kid I was talking about. Fujin, he is Shin. He was my classmate. He is a special Jounin. He'll be giving you tips on how to become a censor. He may seem grumpy at times, but don't worry. He is a very kind person. Fujin nodded, Good morning Shin Sensei. He noted that Shin, who was already looking a bit mad at Jenki's introduction, seemed even more grumpy after he greeted him. Shin angrily said, Damn you Jenki. 
Not only do you give such a shit introduction but now are also trying to pull me into being a sensei. He then looked at Fujin strictly and said, Kiddo, don't ever call me sensei. Fujin wondered, why is everyone so strange, while Genki asked mockingly, Damn, why do you have to be so grumpy so early in the day? Fujin acted to show he was nervous and asked, So what do I call you? Shin thought for a few seconds, and then put up a smile on his face, with his eyes almost sparkling, and said call me Shin Anaki. His face looked borderline creepy. Fujin's expression immediately became entirely plain and almost blurted out, why don't I call you old geezer? Genki facepalmed and scolded, stop being creepy. Let him call you sensei. Shin sighed in disappointment and replied, all right, leave it. Then looking at Fujin he said, all right kiddo, first let's see how talented you are in becoming a sensor. If your talent is very poor, then I won't be teaching you and you shouldn't waste your time on it either. He first lectured Fujin a bit about what sensors do and how. Then instructed Fujin to sit in a meditative pose and told him how to sense his chakra field. It took nearly half an hour for Fujin to sense his chakra field. The instructions were very helpful. Shin then tested Fujin's chakra field a bit. After some testing, he concluded that Fujin's chakra field had a radius of 7.3 meters. Shin commented, 7.3 meters, not bad. An average ninja has a chakra field of 4 to 5 meters. In my Yamanaka clan, we train our youngsters in becoming a sensor if their chakra field exceeds 7 meters, while for other Kanaha shinobi, the minimum requirement is 5.9 meters. However that is just the bare minimum. Quite a few in the Yamanaka clan had their chakra field exceed 10 meters before they started training to become a sensor. I myself had a radius of 10.6 meters. So while you can become a sensor, you'll have to do a lot of hard work. So are you sure you still wanted to train to become a sensor? Fujin processed all the information quickly and nodded. Shin said, all right, I'll guide you. However, the process of training to become a sensor is quite complicated. We will need proper training facilities. I'll take you to the place where Kanaha sensors are trained. You will start visiting there daily at 10.30 a.m. from tomorrow onwards. Genki nodded at his former classmate. He looked at Fujin and informed, Lord Hokage will have your seals ready by tomorrow. Report to his office tomorrow at 6 p.m. Fujin nodded and said, Thank you Sensei. He then accompanied Shin to the training facility. The location was slightly away from the residential areas. It was in the middle of one of the many many forests in Kanaha. Fujin memorized the location and then took his leave. Next day, Fujin reached the training facility at 10.28 a.m. He saw that Shin was already there. On entering, Fujin saw that there were a lot of rooms in the facility. The facility was mostly empty with very few people actually being there. However Fujin noted that quite a few rooms were occupied. Shin said, these rooms isolate everything outside it. And also have seals that can eliminate all sound and smell in the room. So you'll have to entirely be dependent on your ability to sense. Fujin paid attention while Shin was explaining it. He thought, I see, this makes sense. I suppose this is where most of Kanaha's sensors train. I guess other trainees are occupying other rooms. I don't recall properly, but I think Kanaha also had a facility that aided it to monitor the whole border of the village to look for intruders or something along those lines though it was only shown in Shippuden and not in Part 1. I wonder if that facility is also in here, or is it someplace elsewhere? Shin led Fujin in one of the rooms. The room was very dark. All walls were painted black. The room was pretty big too. On entering, Shin explained Fujin how to train to be able to sense with only the help of his chakra. He said, a blindfold will be placed on you, and after the seals are activated, all sound and smell in the room will be eliminated. After that, a few objects will be placed in the room. These objects have a small amount of chakra sealed within them in a manner that it can be detected by sensors. So your job will be to detect these objects. 
We will start by placing the object 3 meters from you, and later increase the range to 5 meters and then to 7 meters. Once you are done with it, then I'll teach you how to increase the size of your chakra field. Fujin understood and thanked him. He started the training. The training continued till 12.30 with him having no success at all. At that time, Shin ended the training. He said, that they'll daily train here for two hours and also gave him a few tips in order to make some progress. He also had a few words of encouragement for Fujin as he said that these things can't be sensed in a day and to not get very upset. He also provided Fujin with a small cubical object. He said, this is one of the objects that I had asked you to sense. You can temporarily borrow this to practice at home. Though you won't be able to block your sense of smell and sound, however it shouldn't matter much as you don't specialize in either of those. So just try to practice with your blindfold on. Maybe ask someone else to place the square down somewhere after you have put the blindfold and sat in your meditative posture. That way you won't know where exactly the cube is beforehand. However, don't practice for very long. Fujin understood all what Shin said and nodded. He then thanked Shin and left for his home. With the academy over, he now had seven additional hours he could use for training. The training at the facility, traveling to and fro and lunch took slightly less than three hours. Fujin allotted all the remaining four hours for chakra sensing training temporarily. In the Hokage office, Hiruzen looked at the custom-made seals on his desk. He sighed softly while thinking, Kanaha's edge in Fuinjutsu is fading fast. With the annihilation of the Uzumaki clan and the passing away of Mito-sama, our progress in Fuinjutsu had almost come to a standstill. Kushina and Minato had just started to make progress, but they died too young. Now it almost took two whole days to get such a simple seal custom made for Fujin. The request is still quite surprising though. Genki did say that the kid was diligent, but asking for such seals at such a young age is incredibly rare. Only a few geniuses among the clans usually train with this. However even they start at a later age in most cases. I do recall him glancing at Genki first before asking for the prize. I guess Genki was the one who suggested the idea to him. I guess I should have a nice chat with him when he visits me in a few hours. At 6 p.m., Fujin reached Hokage office and entered after knocking. He greeted respectfully while bowing his head slightly, Good evening Lord Hokage. Hiruzen was impressed by it, he thought, well at least his manners are very good. He said, look up. Here are the seals you requested. This seal is a special seal designed by our village, it combines the features of a few basic seals in order to create a perfect tool to help train the bodies of our shinobi. You can manipulate the amount of pressure the seal puts on your body freely. The pressure is applied on the whole body. Fujin nodded and said, Thank you Lord Hokage. He then looked at the seal placed in front of him. The seal was engraved on a square-shaped paper. He thought, there is just one seal. I thought that there would be four or more seals to be applied on various parts of the body like the four limbs and so on. I guess this seal is much more advanced. Sigh, I can't analyze this seal then. Still, it's better that I have to place this seal on myself and no one else has to make the seal on my body. This way the chances of someone creating issues will probably be lower. That said, I'm not supposed to know much about Fuinjutsu. He then looked up at Hokage, and asked, Lord Hokage, how do I use this seal? Hiruzen replied, just place the seal on your chest. It should stick to your body. The seal is reusable so you can remove it and put it again if you ever wanted to. But don't ever give this seal to anyone else. Fujin replied, Yes, Lord Hokage. But how do I increase or decrease the pressure caused by the seal? Also how much pressure can be applied by the seal? Hiruzen chuckled at the curiosity of the youngster in front of him. He replied, Just focus your chakra on the seal. It's similar to how you focus chakra on the leaf during leaf concentration exercise. Then you can decide whether to increase or decrease the pressure and it'll be done automatically. As for the maximum pressure, it can apply a lot. 
it is equivalent to wearing a body vest of 100 kg, 50 kg weights on each leg and 25 kg weights on each arm. Fujin was shocked with those numbers. He nearly cursed out, bastard, shouldn't you say that first? However he maintained control of his emotions. In order to keep up his act, he gulped and showed a bit of fear on his face. Hiruzen looked at Fujin's expression and smirked internally, thinking, well, this will ensure that he always uses that seal very carefully and doesn't harm himself with it. After that, Hiruzen talked a bit with Fujin. He tried to understand what caused Fujin to require these seals. He also asked about his daily life, whether his apartment is comfortable, whether he ate properly and so on. He also made Fujin try controlling the pressure in his presence. He also explained some tips and precautions. For instance, he said that while sleeping, Fujin should always deactivate the seal. He also cautioned Fujin against using the seal while sparring or fighting saying, if you get used to it, then you will find it hard to properly control your movements when you deactivate the seal. At the end, he praised Fujin's performance in the exams and let him go. After leaving, Fujin thought, 250 kilograms hey. I really want to know if anyone actually uses it all. I do wonder how much weight Lee carried. The number was never mentioned in the series. While leaving the Hokage office, Fujin had already activated the seal. In front of Hiruzen, he kept the pressure very low. However, after leaving the Hokage building, he increased the pressure. He increased it to a level where it put a decent amount of strain on his body, while still being able to bear it. He ran all the way to his home and thought, finally, even this simple run was a challenge. Though I will probably have to reduce the pressure a bit in order to be able to complete the workout routine Jenki provided. I suppose I'll have to test for a few days in order to get the pressure right. I can track my progress too, as I will know the percentage of max pressure applied by the seal. He also thought about what all Hiruzen told him and focused on two points, he specified to not use the seal while sleeping and fighting. I suppose not following the first one ain't an option. As for second, I can understand his point of view and concerns. If I do it, then trying to fight without that pressure will cause plenty of issues. Of course they can be fixed with some work, however if in the middle of a fight, it'll be deadly. However Kagaya did have a high gravity dimension. So I should try to learn to fight under high pressure too. But there's no need to do it now. Maybe later on I could build a gravity chamber and practice there. That might be more effective. Still, I gotta admit that this seal is very good. It applies pressure throughout my body. The pressure on my legs is more than on my arms. Even my back feels the strain. I guess the seal is made in a way that every muscle is properly exercised. Which would result in proper development of the whole body. There won't be any cases of some muscles being developed more and others being underdeveloped. I guess Hiruzen left out the specifics, not expecting me to understand them. This method is much superior to the weights Lee used. I guess I really need to be thankful to Jenki. Though. This does make me wonder why these guys haven't given the seal to every Kanaha shinobi. Is it that hard to produce? Ending his train of thoughts, Fujin started to meditate. Chapter 16, Chapter 16, Second Academic Year Over the next few days, Fujin experimented with the pressure applied by the seal. He turned seven year old as well. It took him four days to be able to figure out the amount of pressure he could be under and still complete his workout. It was slightly over 2% of the seal's max capacity. He thought, wow, that's very low. Then again, I'm barely seven years old now. Anyways, at least my physique should develop faster now. His sensor training continued as well. It took him eight days to finally be able to sense the objects placed around him. Yamanaka Shin was a bit disappointed by the progress, he sighed and thought, eight days, while it ain't bad, it's not very good either. He probably won't be able to be an exceptional sensor. Though with some work, he could be a decent one. 
While the time is slightly better than the average of other Kanaha sensors, it lacks when compared to sensors from my clan. On average, we are able to sense the object on the seventh day, and the more talented ones do it even faster. Oh well, Kanaha does severely lack sensors. Due to the existence of Hyaga, Abarame, and Inyazuka clans, the village didn't really invest much into training sensors. Majority of Kanaha's sensors come from my clan. Having another sensor, even just an average one will be good for the village. After that, Shin moved the objects away from Fujin and placed them four to five meters away. As the basics were the same and the objects were still in his chakra field, he was able to sense it very quickly in less than half an hour. Shin was surprised by the speed. He moved the objects seven meters away, and the same thing repeated. This surprised Shin a lot, well this is surprising. Though on average a Yamanaka senses the objects on the seventh day, sensing after moving it away takes some time, with most going into the eighth day and a few even to the ninth day. I guess he has more talent than I thought. Fujin's thoughts were, while it did take a long time to detect it, to detect after increasing range wasn't tough. The principles were the same and the object was still in my chakra field. I guess the next training would be to increase the size of my chakra field. He sighed slightly thinking, I hope the training for it isn't as boring as this one. After the training was done, Shin said to Fujin, Not bad, you have progressed faster than I thought. Over the next four days, keep practicing the same at your home, so that you get more comfortable with sensing chakras in your field. I'll be out on a mission, so I won't meet you. Once I return, we will start training to increase the radius of your chakra field. Fujin thanked him and left. The next couple of months went in a similar manner. The training for increasing the chakra field included even longer hours of meditation. He had to focus on one point and try to increase the range in that direction. Fujin thought, this is gonna take a long time. I guess over the vacation, I should work on being able to train while also keeping my eyes open instead of putting up a blindfold. That way I can train for this in the class too. Otherwise, there will be no hope of continuing this training after Academy restarts. Over the vacation, he kept up his physical workouts, which produced great results thanks to the SEAL. He also trained a lot in the substitution jutsu. His goal was to reduce the time required to perform it and also reduce the number of required hand signs from 5 to 0. While he didn't make any progress on reducing the number of hand signs, he was able to perform it much faster, being able to do it in less than a second, though he wasn't sure of the exact time due to having no instruments to measure it. For clone jutsu, he was able to create three clones, which if he recalled correctly, was the requirement for the Genin graduation exam. Transformation jutsu was progressing well too as no one was able to see any issue with him when he was roaming in the streets while being transformed into others but he hadn't yet tested it against someone who knew him. As for chakra control, he became capable of running freely on water surfaces. So he reduced the time allotted to it and only practiced it twice a week instead of daily. While he had some ideas to improve his chakra control even further, he decided to try them later so as to be able to focus more on ninjutsu. The wind nature transformation training had taken a step back as Fujin felt that he had trained enough for it. He thought, being able to cut a stone was probably on par with being able to cut a waterfall. Even on the metal, I'm able to leave small scratches on the surface. As for earth training, he had bought more clay to work on molding it and had also brought a small one-foot rock in his home, which he attempted to crumble after being bored of sensor training. As for sensor training, after teaching Fujin how to increase the radius of his chakra field, the meetings with Shin were reduced to only twice a week. When the vacation ended, Fujin was able to instantly sense chakra if anyone stepped in his chakra field, unless that person had hidden his chakra. However he had to actively focus to do that. If he didn't focus, then he wasn't able to sense anyone. However, he noticed that he was able to passively sense chakra in 0.6 meter radius around himself. Shin said that this was something every sensor developed over time. 
and was very important as this didn't require attention and the sensor could do other tasks simultaneously. His radius of chakra field increased to over four times of its initial size to slightly over 30 meters. Shin was quite impressed with the pace of his improvement. Shin also taught Fujin to be able to measure the amount of chakra in the ninjas in his chakra field. He explained its uses in identifying the threat level. But he also explained to not be entirely reliant on it as the amount of chakra can be hidden as well. He demonstrated to Fujin as to how he could reduce his chakra that others can sense, or even completely hide it to appear as a common civilian. Shin taught the same to Fujin too. Fujin had some success in hiding his chakra completely, though it wasn't perfect yet. However, trying to reduce it and putting up a facade of having a lower chakra level was very difficult as his chakra would fluctuate a lot. On the other hand, Fujin was able to sense chakra without restricting any of his senses or without having to use the hand sign or even while moving around. However, without the hand sign, the radius of the chakra field used to reduce to around 25 meters, and while moving around, it went down to merely 17 meters. It showed that he still had a lot of work to do. On the last day of vacation, Shin said, you have improved a lot. In the future you can easily become a good sensor with some more training. So keep working on it. We won't have any more training sessions, but feel free to approach me if you have anything to clarify. Fujin thanked him for all his help over the past two months and took his leave. He also returned the chakra objects that he had borrowed. Fujin was really grateful to him. Though Fujin's capabilities as a sensor were still very poor, in the past two months, Shin had drilled all the basics of being a sensor into him. Now he merely needed to put more efforts into becoming a good sensor. The new year in the academy finally started. Genki was again our class teacher. Fujin guessed that he'll be the class teacher until they became Genin. The new year started with another brainwashing lecture. Fujin, not wanting to waste any time, employed the art he had mastered in his previous life and remastered in this one, the art of faking attention in a lecture. He moved his attention to his chakra field. His plan was to focus on increasing the radius of his chakra field. But upon sensing others, he decided to compare everyone's chakra levels first. After noticing everyone's chakra levels, he concluded, wow, my chakra reserves are really very good. The efforts taken over the previous year and half have really been very fruitful. It's good to finally be able to see the results of my efforts. As for others, Fujin noted that on average the chakra levels of the civilian students, and students from Nara, Yamanaka, Kato, Hitaki, Saratobi, and Kurama clans is lower than others. Comparatively, students from Hyaga, Akimichi, Inyazuka, Aberme and Uchiha clans have slightly more chakra. In all, Uchiha Yori's chakra is the sixth highest in the class, while Hayaga Hoka ranks seventh. While that was what he expected, the one with the fifth highest chakra surprised him. He thought, now that's surprising. The fifth highest chakra level is of Shimura Nobu. I guess Danzo really has a proper training system for kids from his clan. As for the ones at the top, there was no surprise. He thought, sigh, these senjus are really blessed with high chakra reserves. Even the two who aren't that talented have their chakra reserves almost 50% greater than that of Yori. Whereas Teru's chakra reserves are more than twice that of Yori. It's even larger than mine. Anyways, the chakra levels of everyone is just as expected. Only Nobu was an exception which implies that they haven't started to do any training to increase their reserves. Makes sense though, as they are only seven years old. Anyways, if he doesn't focus on increasing his chakra level, I should be able to increase my chakra reserves to become larger than Teru's. He then tried to measure the chakra level of Genki. On measuring it, he thought, I see, his and Shin's chakra reserves are very similar to each other. I guess there isn't much difference between an elite Chuyunin and a special Jounin. It's just that a special Jounin has a skill that is at Jounin level, while the rest of his skills are only at elite Chuyunin level. For Shin, it is his capabilities as a sensor. I gotta agree that becoming a sensor is very convenient. 
unless the ones being sensed are sensors too, there's little chance of anyone realizing that they are being sensed. Though I suppose all of the cage level ninjas would have mastered this to a certain extent. Oh well, it's not like I'm planning to hunt any cages. Anyways, enough with this class. I should check the ones from other classes, especially the ones who will be becoming gen in this year. While the 25 meter radius of my chakra field is pretty insignificant in an open field, in a compact building, it covers a lot. With those thoughts, he started to focus on chakras outside his classroom. He first observed the classroom in which he had seen Daisuke run in. Noticing the chakra levels of the students there, he observed that they were really low. He then focused on the room where he knew the classes for senior most batches happen. He measured their chakras. He observed that there were a few with really pitiful chakra levels. He guessed that most of them won't become genin. On average however, their chakra level was only 20% higher than Teru's. Though there were a few having much higher chakra levels. Fujin guessed that those kids were from the Senju clan too. Fujin concluded, I see. I suppose by the end of this academic year, my chakra reserves should become high enough and could be considered genin level. And I know all the three basic jutsus too. So in terms of chakra and ninjutsu, I should reach genin level in a year. Even Taijutsu should reach that stage in less than two years. But that won't be enough to actually pass the graduation exam. The graduation exam has so much more than just Taijutsu and Ninjutsu. There's training on moving stealthily, setting up an encampment, incapacitating a target, freeing yourself if you are captured, using a first aid kit, even hunting, cleaning and cooking a wild animal and a lot more that will be taught in the academy. Without all that knowledge and training, becoming a ninja might well be suicide. Not to mention, actually trying to graduate so early would be stupid. Itaki was a different case. He is the son of the Uchiha patriarch. I, on the other hand, am merely an orphan. It would attract a lot of unwanted attention. In addition, just from the point of view of ninjutsu, I still have so much more to learn. I still have to learn a few more basic jutsus like body flicker, and not to mention I still have to learn wind and earth style jutsus. Apart from that, I'm almost entirely blank when it comes to genjutsu and have a lot to learn in kenjutsu. So there's no point in graduating until I have gained everything I could from the academy. If I ever reach a point where I can't make much progress due to being in the academy, then I'll consider graduating early. After considering all that, Fujin finally focused on increasing the radius of his chakra field. The remaining lecture went in a similar boring manner. However, at the end of the lecture Jenki said something that excited some of his fellow students. He said, this year, we will start learning ninjutsu. Chapter 17, Chapter 17, Body Flicker Fujin wasn't surprised by that news. He had already gathered enough information about the academy in the previous year. For normal students, the ninjutsu training began in their third year. However for the elite batches, it began in their second year. Having already learned the three basic jutsus, he wasn't much interested in the news. Though he did have a concern, he thought, I'll have to hide the fact that I can use these jutsus. I'll need to learn how to fail at these jutsus and have to do it in a manner that doesn't give me any bad habits. I suppose I could just make hand signs without molding my chakra, or maybe mold chakra for a few of the hand signs without molding it for one. I'll have to test that first. When around 7 to 8 are able to perform the jutsu, I'll show that I have just managed to do them too. In the first week, Jenki just revised what they had learned in the previous year and tested all the students. However, seeing the progress of some of the students had left Fujin speechless. Jenki too was surprised, but it was a joyous surprise for him. In the leaf concentration exercise, Hana, Teru, and Nobu, all were able to hold the leaf for more than half an hour. While Yori and Hoka exceeded 25 minutes, Fujin had dropped his leaf after 36 minutes, in order to not attract any suspicion. His thoughts were, damn. If they keep up this competitive nature, 
they may well reach beyond one hour by the end of this year. While it's reasonable to expect me to keep up, I should instead show that I've slacked off and not made much progress. While Jenki might get a bit suspicious, if he ever asks me, I'll just say I felt bad for them and am letting them win. Jenki was very impressed too. He thought, four kids were able to stick the leaf for over half an hour, another two should be able to reach that in another couple of months. This batch is good. I guess that Fujin brat spurred them all on. They might actually be able to do tree climbing and even water walking before they graduate. Oh this is so nice, I could get a huge bonus from the Hokage. The Shuriken competition didn't give much insights on their growth, as many were already doing very well in the previous year. The Taijutsu tournament however, didn't show that much improvement for everyone. Among the ones at the top, only Yuri and Nobu made significant progress. Fujin guessed that it was only because of his performance in the leaf concentration exam that made everyone focus a lot on it. However, the Inuzukas were performing much better than last year and were very aggressive too. Due to the poor scores of all three Inuzukas in the exams, they were given some special training by their clan in order to not embarrass the clan any further. In one of the spars, one Inuzuka kid screamed, I'll defeat you no matter what. There's no way I will go through that training in my clan ever again. Hearing that, the other two Inuzuka students winced. Fujin, Getting a hint of what would have happened thought, this world is in a severe need of laws punishing child abuse. Sadly for that Inuzuka student, he still got mercilessly beaten into the ground by Nobu, which made everyone feel pity for the poor kid. The Taijutsu tournament, however, did provide Fujin with the opportunity to finally test his progress. And he was very pleased with the results. After deactivating the seals, his body moved a lot faster and his blows carried more weight. He tied against Teru in their match. After the first week was done, Fujin entered the library and went into Section D. He thought, I've probably tried the substitution jutsu over a thousand times. I'm still not able to reduce the hand signs needed for it. Honestly, jutsu is almost completely useless against ninjas if you have to make those hand signs. Even a random genin would be able to identify the jutsu and be on alert. Though I guess it might still work on normal bandits. Anyways, I guess I'll need a few years to be able to reduce the number of hand signs needed. So let's just move on to a new jutsu. He quickly started searching for the jutsu he wanted to learn. He was quite excited to learn it as it was one of his favorites. On finding it, he read out softly, the body flicker jutsu. He found a place to sit, and read the scroll. After reading and analyzing it, he concluded, Hmm, this jutsu can be called both easy and complicated at the same time. It's easy as there is only one hand sign required. The tiger seal. So the way of molding chakra is very simple. And it's complicated as actually performing this technique is quite difficult. I would have to focus a lot of chakra in my legs to be able to move at such high speeds. According to the scroll, initially I'll only be able to flicker a few meters away. Only when I'm able to flicker a 100 meters away would I be considered to have learned this jutsu. It is also mentioned to use something like smoke or leaves just before using this jutsu so that the enemy doesn't understand the direction in which you flicker to. Also, it is very important to ensure not to run into someone or something while using this jutsu. I suppose me being a sensor might help a bit in this regard. However, there's no such thing as the maximum distance one can flicker away. Instead it is the amount of time you can sustain this jutsu. I thought that I'll need to learn to be able to flicker many times consecutively if I want the help of this jutsu to be able to escape. However instead it is the amount of time you can maintain this jutsu. So if I'm able to flicker 100 meter away in a second and am able to sustain this jutsu for 10 seconds, I'll be able to run a kilometer away. But this is good I suppose. It's more convenient than having to flicker again and again. After learning the whole process from the scroll, Fujin left the library. He transformed into a random 13-year-old stranger in an empty alleyway. And then ran into a nearby mini-forest. 
He then ran around in that mini forest while trying to sense if any chakra is present around him. After that he thought, all right, this forest is clear. Also I'm under a disguise. So I can start training. While a forest isn't the best place to train body flicker, but, since the amount of distance I can flicker initially will be low, there shouldn't be an issue. Though I'll need to train in open spaces once I start to flicker long distances away. And he started training for this jutsu. The months went on in a peaceful manner for Fujin. His physique kept improving due to the seal. He used to increase the pressure of the seal by 0.1% from time to time. In the academy, Genki started ninjutsu with the transformation technique. Fujin had experimented and found it easy to fake hand signs without molding his chakra. However he felt that it was wasteful. So he tried another trick. He started faking the first hand sign, but while changing the hand sign to the second seal, he used to try to mold the chakra for the first seal without the aid of the first hand sign. In this manner, he practiced to do those jutsus with one hand sign less. As expected, Teru and Yori were the most talented in ninjutsu. They competed for the top two spots. Nobu, no matter how hard he tried, only ranked third. Hoka, Hana, and the Abarame kid competed for ranks four to six. Fujin ranked himself tenth in transformation jutsu, seventh in clone jutsu and eighth in substitution jutsu. It took him a month to be able to do the body flicker jutsu despite learning the way to mold chakra within just three days. Even then, he was only able to flicker for a few meters. Over the next month, instead of trying to increase the range, he instead worked on increasing the speed of performing the jutsu, and also managed to pull it off without using any hand signs. In a single month, he probably practiced that jutsu thousands of times to be able to do that. Next he worked on increasing the range of the jutsu. It took him four and a half months in all to reach 100 meters with body flicker. He then started focusing on sustaining the body flicker for a longer period. Sometime around this time, the incident of Kumo trying to kidnap Hinata and the death of Hizashi happened. Both Hoka and Hana were very solemn the next day. In order to properly measure his progress, he bought a stopwatch. After six months, he was able to flicker 400 meters away in less than four seconds. After that he thought, my original plan was to start with elemental jutsu by now, but body flicker does have more applications I want to explore. Sigh, let's stick to it. Mastering body flicker to a high degree will be extremely essential later on. He continued with his body flicker training. By the time the exams for second year were up, Fujin had managed to sustain his body flicker for 12.76 seconds and managed to cover 1.9 kilometers. He could also change the direction midway, though he couldn't do it very frequently, and could also perform flicker while in a forest and having to avoid running into a tree. He was extremely pleased with his progress. Over at the academy, he had managed to reduce the hand signs required for transformation and clone jutsus by one and for substitution jutsu, he was close to reducing it by two. His chakra field had increased a lot during this year. Its radius had increased to 180 meters. Without the hand sign it reached 162 meters and while running at normal speed, it could reach 135 meters. His chakra reserves too had grown exponentially. Physical training and meditation itself were a huge boost. On top of it, he had practiced body flicker till he dropped on a daily basis. He had performed body flicker for tens of thousands of times over the past nine months. His reserves now exceeded Teru's. On comparing it with the senior most batch, he noticed that his reserves would be well above average in that class, probably entering top ten. Only two students, probably from the Senju clan, exceed him considerably. Even then, he was sure that in another year, he would surpass their current chakra level. He thought, I guess it's time to ask Hiruzen for the shadow clone jutsu. A slash N, I would like to clarify the shadow clone jutsu a bit. Shadow clone jutsu isn't a forbidden jutsu, it's merely a B-rank jutsu which Jounins can learn easily. In Naruto, 
it was shown that a Genin Kanoamaru was able to perform shadow clones and use Ray's Nan on one of the pains. Even Kaiba, while being a Chuyunin, was able to perform a shadow clone. The Jutsu in the Forbidden Scroll of Sealing was the multi-shadow clone Jutsu. This is the one which Naruto spams and Kakashi had used to scare slash bluff away Gato's thugs. So I'll follow this pattern, someone with Genin level chakra can create 1 to 2 shadow clones, with Chuyunin level chakra can create 3 to 5 shadow clones and with a Jounin level chakra can create more than 5 shadow clones. The increase in his chakra level could be seen, when he was finally able to burst the rubber ball, finally making progress in the stage 2 of Ray's Nan training. However, he was only barely able to burst it. He still needed more chakra to be able to actually perform Ray's Nan. His skill at throwing shurikens had increased too. He was now able to hit the board while running around and was also able to hit a moving board. In order to allow students to practice that, a board used to be suspended from a tree branch and moved. It worked like a pendulum. However he still struggled to hit a moving board while he was running himself. Fujin decided that after he managed to do that, he'll start practicing to hit his clones with shuriken as that would replicate battle scenarios even better. Something that Fujin gained while practicing in the many many forests in Kanaha was shurikens and kunaos lying around. He had found 23 shuriken and 11 kunao. However 7 shuriken and 4 kunao were very badly damaged, leaving him with 16 shuriken and 7 kunao. He handled them with extreme care, not touching any directly, in case they were coated with poison. He thought, well this is convenient. Though these are used weapons, they are still very usable. However I need to wash them properly in order to remove any sense of previous users and in case there's any poison applied on them. Still. I've been in these forests for so long and only found so few of these. I guess everyone collects them back after using them as they aren't cheap. Maybe others like me too roam around trying to find them. He sighed, whatever, these many should be enough for me to practice. And soon, it was time for the second year exams. Creator's Thoughts Double Release Enjoy Chapter 18 Chapter 18 Second Year Exams As Fujin had expected, the whole marking system for their class had been revamped. He wondered if the same also happened for other elite batches. As for the overall exams, the written exam had 100 points, leaf concentration competition had 20 points, shuriken throwing competition had 20 points, each of the three ninjutsu had 10 points each, and the teijutsu tournament had 30 points. In the written exam, he noticed that it had five divisions among itself. Each being more difficult than the previous. While it wasn't very hard for him, he had no doubt that eight-year-olds from his previous world wouldn't even pass this exam. Seeing how difficult the exam was, he purposefully made a mistake in two questions worth two marks each. For leaf concentration, the same marking system as the previous year followed. Yuri, Hoka, crossed 45 minutes. Nobu dropped at 56th minute, Teru at 59th minute. Hana crossed one hour and held it for another four minutes. Fujin, knowing that the written exam this year was tougher and not expecting anyone to score full, dropped his leaf after one hour 11 minutes. The shuriken exam also had multiple layers like the written exam. The first was to throw eight shurikens at a stationary target board. The second was to run alternately to the right and left to a circle drawn on the ground and throw from the circle while running. The third was to hit at the target board that was hanging and swinging like a pendulum. Each of these stages were worth four points each. The last stage, worth eight points, had white plates being launched in the air by Genki. The plates were spinning incredibly fast causing them to not move at a set path and deviating slightly. Yori, Teru, Fujin. Nobu, Hoka scored max in the first three rounds. Hana struggled in the second round, while scoring full in first and third. The fourth round however was tough. Nineteen students didn't manage to hit even one. And six, including Hana, managed to hit just one, Fujin guessed that most of them just scored a lucky hit. 
Fujin had been observing the plates all the time to try and see a pattern in them. He got some hints, but not enough and it resulted in him wishing, damn, if only I had a Sharingan. Hoka and Fujin just hit two. Nobu hit three plates, Tara managed to hit four and Yuri managed to hit seven of the eight plates thrown by Genki. Fujin was quite impressed by Yuri's performance, especially considering that he hadn't yet awakened his Sharingans. After the competition, Yuri returned to his smug self. In ninjutsu exams, transformation and substitution jutsu were analyzed and marked by Genki. For clone jutsu, they were marked depending upon the maximum number of acceptable clones anyone made. Teru made five clones and looking at his chakra, Fujin was confident no one else would exceed him. So he created four clones. Fujin hid his skills in this exam as he knew that Hannah wasn't very good in this aspect and no one apart from her would come close to his score in written exams. The Taijutsu tournament was similar to the previous year. Only major differences being the Inyazukas performing much better and Fujin having a much stronger body. Right now he could have the seal apply 5.3% of its max pressure. It had improved his physique a lot. He trashed through the majority of his opponents. This time, he ran into Teru in the semi-finals and managed to beat him. While Hoka beat Hana in his fight. Yori beat Nobu for rank 5, whereas Teru beat Hana for rank 3. Against Hoka, the fight was very intense. To Fujin's surprise, his advantage in physique wasn't that great. In the end, he still lost to Hoka. He thought, is he too using seals or something similar to strengthen his body? His performance in ninjutsu isn't as good as his teijutsu, and it's better to not talk of his performance in written exams looking at previous year's scores. Sigh, I guess all he does is train in teijutsu. And my main focus has been on ninjutsu. Little wonder that I can't beat him. After the scores were tallied, the results of the top five were Fujin, 96 plus 20 plus 14 plus 23 plus 29 equals 182. Teru, 81 plus 17 plus 16 plus 30 plus 28 equals 172. Nobu, 86 plus 16 plus 15 plus 28 plus 25 equals 170. Hana, 91 plus 18 plus 12 plus 21 plus 27 equals 169. Yuri, 79 plus 14 plus 19 plus 28 plus 26 equals 166. After looking at the results, Genki thought, hmm, this is pretty similar to last year. Only difference is that instead of the leaf concentration competition, Fujin built his lead in the written exam. How much does this kid study exactly? The last 20 marks were quite tough to get. As for the rest, Tara was the one who performed the best overall. Except for the written exam, he is in the top three of every exam. Leaf concentration competition is still dominated by Fujin. But with the performance of the others, I can start tree walking exercise next year. In the shuriken throwing competition, Yori was in a league of his own. Same with Hoka in the Taijutsu tournament. Though that seal did help Fujin a lot. I guess I should suggest to Tara's parents to get that seal for him as well. It will help him a lot. In ninjutsu, Teru. Yori and Nobu are all excellent. Just that Teru has more chakra than the other two. And I'm pretty sure that they do know more jutsus as well. This class has performed really well. The top 8 to 12 students are all very good. Lord Third should be very happy with their performance. After he was done thinking, he put up the results on display. Looking at it, everyone had mixed reactions. Since the exam markings were made to ensure that the ones who perform well stand out, the ones who didn't work hard scored very low. A few still struggled to hit a stationary target board with shuriken, so there was no way they could do much in the remaining three rounds. There were a few who didn't manage to learn even one ninjutsu properly. And the majority didn't get all the three ninjutsu down. There were only 12 students who could do that. The written exams were very tough too. The last 20 marks being very difficult to get and even the 20 marks before that being significantly difficult. Fujin did note the disappointed expressions of the ones who scored very bad. 
It reminded him of how much worse the life of the kids here was when compared to his previous world. And even then these were considered to be very good conditions. At least they didn't have to fight in a war. Among the toppers, Yori was upset thinking, why am I still ranked only fifth? Still I have at least shown everyone how good the Uchiha are at shuriken technique. But that's not enough. Hannah was incredibly upset with tears almost forming in her eyes. She was upset at her rank dropping from second to fourth. Nobu didn't show any emotions, however, even he was upset at not being able to top the exam. Teru sighed looking at the scores, last year it was the leaf concentration competition, and this time the written exam. Sucks to not be rank 1 due to the written exams. Still at least I'm the best when it comes to the skills required on the field. Not to mention, that the exam didn't consider the water style jutsu I know. Fujin looked at the results showing a happy expression. His thoughts were, well this went as expected. Though I'm surprised that some guys scored over 80 on the written exam. I guess the brains of the kids here develop faster. My shuriken still requires some work, but that's fine. In Taijutsu I doubt I'll be able to surpass Hoka unless he slacks off. In Ninjutsu I'm on PAR with Teru and others. Heck, I could have made 8 clones and decreased their scores if I wanted to, but there was no need for it. So it's going good. Next I should focus on elemental jutsus. However, then he frowned mentally thinking, still, the performance of the kids in this exam has been so good that I'm worried they may make a few of us graduate early. I'm glad that Jenki hasn't started teaching about all the other important stuff yet. I guess his plan was to allow everyone to learn ninjutsu and fighting skills first so that they can keep improving them over the years. Though with the pace at which he has been going, it makes me wonder if he wants to make us graduate early or teach us more complicated stuff. Jenki looked at the expression of all his students and sighed. He noticed that only Fujin had a happy expression, Nobu was expressionless as always and Tara just looked a bit down. Almost everyone else was incredibly upset. He sighed, I got excited and made the marking system really in favor of the geniuses. Last year's results made them more competitive however this year's might have a detrimental effect. I'll need to talk individually with everyone in order to pacify and cheer them up, so that they take this exam results as a motivation to do better in the future. He then glanced at the Inuzuka kids, I guess I should call their parents too. The exams ended with another brainwashing speech by Hiruzen. He called Fujin forward and asked him what reward he wanted this time. Fujin stepped forward and said, Lord Hokage, could I get to learn the Shadow Clone Jutsu? Hiruzen was really surprised by this request. He asked, where did you hear about the Shadow Clone Jutsu? And why do you want to learn it? Fujin showed an excited expression and said, Lord Hokage, we were told that the second Hokage had started this academy. So I became quite interested in him and hence read a lot about his life and everything he did. On understanding more about him, I was very inspired by him. And when I read that he had created the Shadow Clone Jutsu, I became very interested in it. Also, the Jutsu seems very useful. Having a clone that can actually do something will be very helpful. He then looked at Hiruzen with expectations. Hiruzen looked at the excitement shown by the young student in front of him. Looking at the respect he had shown to his sensei, he emotionally thought, Sensei, even after being dead for decades, your will of fire still inspires the kids in Kanaha. Hiruzen had sensed his chakra level during the Taijutsu tournament. Fujin, wanting to ask for the Shadow Clone Jutsu, didn't bother hiding his real chakra level. Hiruzen thought, his chakra level is sufficient to be barely able to form one Shadow Clone. Fine, I'll give it to him, but I need to warn him about the dangers of that technique. Hiruzen nodded and said, All right, I'll prepare the scroll for you. Come to my office tomorrow at noon. Fujin showed that he was even more excited on hearing that and thanked him immediately. However on the inside, he was quite shocked. He thought, that's it. A few good words about Tobirama and he agreed. Should I have asked for Flying Thunder God or Impure World Resurrection? 
he sighed internally and further thought, then again, Shadow Clone isn't really a very complex jutsu. It is just B rank and even elite Chuyunans can easily access it from the library. Also, my respect for Tobirama was genuine. Unlike Hiruzen, he did do his job properly. Though how he died in war despite knowing Flying Thunder God is a mystery to me. So Hiruzen wouldn't be able to pick up on anything. And Tobirama creating that jutsu, is written down in scrolls about him in the library. So I guess there wasn't much to be suspicious about. With those thoughts, he walked back to his fellow students. Genki then announced about meeting with everyone personally tomorrow, and gave everyone a time slot. He asked them to bring at least one parent along. Chapter 19, Chapter 19, Shadow Clone Jutsu The following day, Genki was very busy with the counseling of all his students. Fujin was the first one in at 8am as Genki had set the schedule according to their ranks. Seeing Fujin, Genki's thoughts were, this kid has done well. But he is only an orphan. I don't think he has any idea how vast this world is. Even though he ranked first twice consecutively, there is still a lot he needs to do. I need to ensure that he doesn't get arrogant and lose his way. Fujin first greeted him, good morning sensei. Genki replied, good morning. Congrats on your performance yesterday. Fujin smiled and replied, thank you sensei and took his seat. Genki smiled, and then quickly got serious. He said, so this meeting is in order to review your performance until now and to see what you should do in the vacation and in the next year. Of all the students from this class, I have interacted with you the most, so don't worry and listen to my advice properly. Feel free to ask all your doubts. Fujin nodded. Genki continued. Your performance has been very good so far. With you ranking first in both years, that is very obvious. However, in both exams, it was only due to you scoring very well in one exam that you ranked first. Fujin nodded seriously, while thinking I'm not even eight years old yet. Should you be having such a serious talk with me? Are eight-year-olds supposed to understand this? Genki on the other hand thought, the kid didn't get upset. He is more mature than other kids his age. Genki continued, so you will have to put more focus on other areas. Tell me, what do you do after the lecture is over? Also what do you do on weekends? Fujin had already guessed that such a question might be asked, though he had thought something like this would have been asked long back. He replied, Sensei, I mostly study what you taught in class, try to understand it. Then I train on the ninjutsu you taught us or I do leaf concentration exercise. And before sleeping, I meditate. On the weekends I study a lot and also train on my sensor skills. What Fujin said was a properly thought out answer he had prepared long back. Showing a major focus at studying would explain why his scores in written exams were so high. The listener would think that he spent most of his time studying. He said that he spent very little time on ninjutsu, which would justify his slightly lower scores there. While his meditation along with morning exercises would be the reason for the high growth in his chakra levels. The answer also showed that he was a very diligent student. Genki wasn't surprised with the answer. He had guessed that it'll be something along these lines considering Fujin's performance. He said, I see. Now let's look at your performance this year. You have done very well in the written exam, chakra control, and taijutsu. However your ninjutsu needs a lot of work. So over the next two months, you should focus on improving the three ninjutsu I taught. Also, even after the third year begins, spend more time on learning ninjutsu and less time on studying. After all, in the future, when you do missions, it'll be a lot more important than what you read. Fujin nodded inwardly surprised, thinking that's a first. No adult has ever told me to study less. Especially not a teacher. Genki was satisfied with his words being listened to seriously. He had a little gift in order to get Fujin work more on ninjutsu. He said, I know that you have asked Lord Hokage for shadow clone jutsu. So do learn it properly, 
in the future it'll be very helpful. However, I have a little gift for you. Saying this, he put a paper in front of Fujin. On seeing that paper, Fujin sighed internally, I wasted my 100 ryo, and then asked curiously, Sensei, what's this? Jenki replied, this is chakra paper. It'll tell you what your chakra nature is. Here pass some of your chakra through it. Fujin did it. The chakra paper split into two. He gave Jenki a puzzled look. Jenki then explained a bit more about chakra paper and said that Fujin's chakra nature was wind. Fujin nodded excitedly despite already knowing it. Jenki said, the way to train your wind nature is that you should take a leaf and try to cut it with your chakra alone. It may take a few months to do it. Once it is done, you can then use wind style jutsus. Fujin nodded again. Jenki also informed Fujin that Yori and Teru could already perform elemental jutsu in order to rouse his competitive spirit. After some more discussion, Fujin took his leave. He was a bit sick of having to feign ignorance of the stuff he already knew. Still he was a bit glad of this discussion. He would have a proper excuse if anyone in the future asked him about when he trained in wind style. Sadly, he'll still have to repeat this again today. Jenki spent the remaining of his day counseling 14 other students, while the other 15 were scheduled for tomorrow. He had such advice for everyone else. Tara was advised to get the same seal as Fujin. He didn't have much advice for Nobu, so he just tried to get him to be more social. For Hannah, he consoled her a bit due to how upset she was. Then he informed her that she put a lot more focus on her rank instead of important aspects. He told her to reduce her time spent on studying and leaf concentration as the majority of her time was spent on it. Instead he asked her to focus more on ninjutsu and taijutsu. For Yuri, he strongly suggested his parents to ensure that he meditates for at least an hour daily. For Hoka, the advice was to focus more on academics. And in a similar way, the advice continued all day as well as the day after. At noon, Fujin visited Hokage's office. Hiruzen handed him a scroll saying, This scroll has the shadow clone jutsu. You are not allowed to share this scroll with anyone else and have to return it to me after you have learned it. Fujin nodded. Hiruzen then talked a bit about the shadow clone jutsu. He warned Fujin, for the time being and maybe for the next year, don't ever try to create more than one shadow clone. Also, when you dispel the clone, all its memories will be transferred to you. And that might cause you a huge headache. So always be careful while dispelling your clones. Also, don't use shadow clones while you are sleeping. It'll be very bad for your health. Fujin nodded and thanked him again. Hiruzen then talked a bit about Tobirama and Fujin had to feign interest in listening to it. After half an hour of stories, Hiruzen finally let Fujin go. Fujin sighed and complained, isn't a Hokage supposed to be super busy with his paperwork? Why did he have so much time to talk with me? Two consecutive sessions of having to feign ignorance as well as interest had Fujin a bit tired. He decided to skip his ration bars and instead went to Ichiraku for lunch. His thoughts were, fuck it, I have saved decent amount of money, I can afford to treat myself for today. Soon after lunch, he started training for the Shadow Clone Jutsu. After reading it properly, he thought, this is easily the most difficult jutsu I have seen yet. The process of molding chakra is very complicated. Makes me wonder how did that brat learn it in less than a day. However, this Shadow Clone is a bit more flexible than the one in Naruto. Chakra doesn't necessarily have to be distributed evenly among my clones. It is up to the caster's will and capabilities in deciding how many percent of his chakra must each clone have. He could create them with equal chakra to hide himself, or give it more or less chakra depending on the need. Another difference is that dispelling the clone won't return all its chakra to the original body. Instead there is some chakra loss that happens during this process. As the jutsu is mastered, this loss reduces, however it won't ever go down to zero. So in the future, I need to be careful in the amount of clones I make. Otherwise I could run out of chakra very quickly. 
On finishing his analysis, he began learning shadow clone technique. Knowing the basic clone jutsu helped a bit. The training continued for a while. Fujin noted that this training drained his chakra very fast. He could only practice for an hour before he was out of chakra. So from the next day, he practiced shadow clone jutsu, as soon as he got up, then around noon, and finally again in the evening, getting three hours of training done while doing either physical exercises or meditation for the remainder of the time. He also carried a few leaves with him. On the ninth day, he was finally able to make a clone. Fujin noted that while molding the chakra is more difficult, its execution was much easier than the body flicker jutsu. After another six days, he was finally able to create an acceptable clone. It was entirely identical and took half of his chakra. However, on sensing, Fujin noted that some chakra was lost while creating the clone, resulting in the clone having slightly less chakra. This wasn't acceptable. However he decided to test the clone first. He asked the clone to go into the bedroom and write any random number somewhere and then dispel. The clone went into the bedroom, and wrote 8196 on a scroll there. On dispelling, Fujin got all the information and checked if it was true. He thought, alright it works. He made another shadow clone. This time, he stabbed the clone's arm with a kunao, causing the clone to dispel. He waited for a few seconds and then concluded, All right, I just got the memories of the clone. The pain wasn't transferred to me. So this jutsu should be safe to use in battle. He then formed the clone again and this time had the clone do the three basic jutsus. The clone could perform them as good as he could. He couldn't test body flicker at his home, so he decided to leave it for later. He then had the clone perform shadow clone. The clone managed to do it, but within a second, they were both dispelled. Fujin sensed that their chakra was very unstable. On thinking, he came to the conclusion, the clones were dispelled as they didn't have enough chakra. Even though a ninja could make a shadow clone with a small percent of his chakra, the shadow clone still needs to have some minimum chakra level. And my single clone, probably barely exceeds that limit. Wait, does that mean? After using a few jutsus, my clone will disappear even if it has some chakra just because the chakra isn't enough. This conclusion had him on alert. He quickly rushed into a mini forest nearby. After transforming and confirming no one was around, he made a shadow clone. The clone, knowing the plan, started performing body flicker again and again, within the main body's chakra field as the main body kept a track of its chakra level. The clone had around 49% of Fujin's chakra. When it fell down below 41%, the clone dispelled. Having confirmed his theory, Fujin sighed, I guess it is impossible to have the clone assist me in ninjutsu training. Though to be honest, it's kinda pointless too as I can't last long on ninjutsu training without having my chakra depleted. After spending half a minute grumbling about his low chakra reserves, he decided, well whatever. This was expected. Hopefully someday in the future, I'll be able to use clones to train. Let's just learn this jutsu properly and be done. In the next five days, he had learned the shadow clone, to an acceptable level. Now no loss of chakra happened while forming the clone. As for the chakra loss while getting chakra back from the clone, it was around 5%. Fujin noticed that it was reducing quickly. With the work on Shadow Clone done, he decided that it was time to finally start practicing elemental jutsus. Though he decided to wait for another 10 days before he returned the scroll to Hiruzen. That way Hiruzen would underestimate his talent a bit. Creator's Thoughts Special thanks to Akasa for proofreading my fanfic and pointing out the errors. Chapter 20, Chapter 20, Wind Release Jutsu, 1. A slash N the number of wind-style jutsu in canon is pitiful. Even the fillers mostly have similar variants of canon jutsu with very little change, but do the same shit. So I'll be using wind jutsu from games or even fan-created ones. I'll also make up some wind jutsu at some point later in this fanfic. On the 21st day of his vacation,
Fujin made his way to the library. On the road, he thought about a lot of wind-style jutsu. His thoughts were, finally I'll be starting with wind-release jutsu. In the series, wind was probably the least powerful element. Though Naruto had wind nature, all he used was Rasen Shuriken. Temari did have a lot of jutsu, but she used a giant fan. Kakuzu used pressure damage, which was very lethal. I think there was also great breakthrough used by Orochimaru and probably Gale Palm used by someone. And lastly, Danzo used his vacuum jutsu, which were very lethal. Sadly, other than Temari, no one else specialized in wind jutsu. And the number of wind jutsu were very low too. Luckily this world does have a lot more wind release jutsu. I might be able to form a comprehensive battle system through it. Last time I just read their names. This time I'll be reading their scrolls too. And then decide the set of jutsu to practice. Still I wish I could have got to read the descriptions of higher ranked wind jutsu as well. It have been very helpful in order to decide. On reaching there, he went through entire sections E and D and made a list of all available wind release jutsu. They were. Gale Jutsu, E. Wind Clone, E. Wind Levitation, E. Projectile Control Jutsu, E. Wind Retrieving Jutsu, E. Gale Surge, D. Breakthrough, D. Dust Cloud, D. Slashing Wind Skill, D. Wind Explosion, D. Propelling Winds, D. The first question for Fujin was, why was Wind Clone merely a rank E Jutsu? On reading the scroll, he understood why. Wind Clone was extremely simple. Elemental clones were like normal clones, just that they were made of elements. That's why they could perform attacks. They got dispelled upon getting hit. Since the material needed for a wind clone was basically the air around, it was extremely simple to make it. However, it was still quite useful, and something he definitely was going to learn. He continued reading the rest of the jutsu to understand what they did. He first read all the rank E jutsu. After reading them, he analyzed, these jutsu aren't lethal. Actually they don't have much use in battle either if compared to other jutsu, instead, I think that they are the means to improve the control of the wind element. I think they will be very important in the future when I will be learning more complex and powerful wind jutsu. Wind levitation is basically using winds in order to raise inanimate objects in the air. The weight of the object that can be levitated and the height to which it can be carried as well as the time for which it can be levitated depends on the user's control over the wind element as well as their stamina and focus. Projectile control jutsu uses wind to control the projectiles launched around the user. So a shuriken or a thrown kunao or senbon can be manipulated to change direction with the help of winds. Wind retrieving jutsu uses winds to pull objects towards the user. It's similar to Nagato's universal pull, except it's done with the help of winds and power depends entirely on the user. And gale jutsu just creates a small wind flow in a direction. It doesn't cause any harm, but has a couple of good uses. For example, it could be used to cover up any footsteps left behind, or change the direction of winds around you to restrict the directions your scent can be carried to. Besides, it probably also serves as a base to all wind jutsu that involves blowing out air. On concluding his analysis, he sighed thinking, I'll have to learn all these jutsu. Not for combat but to improve my control over wind. That said, wind clone, levitation, control and pulling, these are excellent jutsu for pranking. I wonder if the ones who made these were pranksters or something. While thinking about it, an incredibly evil idea popped into Fujin's head. An idea that would have made the lives of Kanaha citizens a living nightmare. He thought, I wonder what kind of shit Naruto would pull if he knew these five jutsu. He sucked as a student, maybe as a ninja too, but he was easily tear s in terms of pranks. Damn, I'm so tempted to teach him this stuff. I'd get enough content to laugh for a lifetime. Fujin had a laugh at that idea. Calming himself down and getting these distracting thoughts out of his mind, he started reading the rank D scrolls. 
After finishing them all he concluded with a single thought, damn, wind release is extremely powerful. That thought wasn't due to the jutsu being overpowered, but instead due to the growth potential of the wind jutsu. Some of those jutsu, if mastered, and used correctly, could end up becoming as good as rank B or even rank A jutsu. He then analyzed each jutsu, dust cloud jutsu is basically just a smokescreen. It should work well with me being a sensor and not needing eyesight to track the enemy. Also it is very simple, so if I have time, it's worth learning. Slashing wind jutsu is the one Temari spammed in the Chuyunin exam. While it packs good power, it requires a fan to use. It's not really my preferred weapon. So I'll probably skip this one. Breakthrough Jutsu is a powered down version of Great Breakthrough Jutsu. No harm in learning it. I can later replace it with Great Breakthrough and then maybe with pressure damage. Gale Surge is a defensive Jutsu. The user sends the air around the user in an outward direction. It could protect me from projectiles and could also disturb the enemy's rhythm. Though its range is too short, at merely 3 meters. Propelling winds is a movement technique. Small blasts of winds are released from the hands in order to help evade. Hmm, this jutsu is pretty simple. I am not really a fan of it, however I have some ideas in the future that could require this jutsu as the base. Wind explosion jutsu seems very versatile. Chakra is infused into wind, to form into a ball like Ray's Nan and it explodes on impact. Though it isn't as powerful as the Ray's Nan and only causes slight damage, it is a very interesting jutsu. I wonder if a combination of this jutsu and wind clone jutsu exists. It could make wind clones extremely lethal. Having analyzed all the jutsu, he had to make the tough final decision of deciding which jutsu to learn. He thought, all of these jutsu have good uses. However, will I be able to learn all of them? He was lost in his thoughts. Not able to reach a conclusion, he decided to calm himself a bit and analyzed further, as for how many of these jutsu I can learn, will depend on my speed of learning these jutsu. And just learning is rather pointless. I'll need to master them. For now, let's eliminate the ones I don't want to learn. It will be slashing wind jutsu. He sighed, this is the only one I don't want to learn. I want to learn all the others. Never mind. Let's list them in the order of importance. Rank E Jutsu are important to be able to get a better control of wind nature. So they are compulsory. Among the remaining, wind explosion Jutsu would probably be the most useful considering its future potential. Next would be wind propelling Jutsu. While it in itself ain't that good, however, if in the future, I'm able to create small blasts of wind willingly around my body to propel myself then that might become a deadly fighting style. Breakthrough Jutsu would be next as it forms the basis of a few stronger Jutsu. Also it provides an AoE option. Gale Surge and Dust Cloud will be the last ones. Gale Surge provides defense in one direction, but it is very temporary. And Dust Cloud just provides cover. I suppose that's enough calculations. I still have a few years before I may have to fight. So let's just try these jutsu. Hopefully a year will be enough for it. Next year I would like to learn a few earth release jutsu and probably one or two genjutsu. I suppose this year I should also start with kenjutsu. Maybe a sword or two. They go really well with wind release. Ending his train of thoughts, he read the scroll of wind release, wind clone jutsu properly. After getting the basics down, he left the library and on arriving in a secluded mini forest, started training for it. However what happened really surprised him. It only took him one try to be able to do the wind clone jutsu. He was left speechless by the ease of it. After calming himself, he analyzed, the jutsu is very similar to normal clone jutsu and I have already learned even shadow clones. Not to mention, my affinity is wind nature and I have already trained a lot to master this element. So I suppose it's no wonder I'm able to learn it in one try. Actually, if I compare it with Itaki, then this achievement isn't much worth mentioning. He was able to do fireball jutsu, a rank C jutsu, on his first try. 
so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. He comforted himself saying, it's all right. This is the fruit of my hard work over the last three years. He spent the rest of the day testing the capabilities of his wind clone. Unlike shadow clones, it didn't transfer memories back, but it didn't require high amounts of chakra either. Since it used the air around it, Fujin guessed that this is the most chakra-friendly clone jutsu. In merely a few hours, he managed to create ten wind clones. It could do all the jutsu the main body could, except shadow clone, and would dispel on taking a hit. After experimenting, Fujin realized that in a head-on battle, wind clones would be more effective than shadow clones. Many times that day, he had the thought of going back to the library and learning another jutsu. However he didn't act on that urge as it might have attracted attention. He sighed thinking, I should have found a way to steal those scrolls. After being satisfied with his progress, he returned home. On the way, he had a peculiar thought about the jutsu he had learned so far. He thought, of the six jutsu I know, three of them are clone jutsu. The next day, he read and learned Gale Jutsu. He had to first gather the chakra and then expel it from his mouth as a gust of wind. He was able to perform it properly after a few tries. The Jutsu was really harmless. When he tried it on a tree, except some old leaves falling down, it didn't cause any harm to the tree at all. After an hour of practice, he could cover up the footsteps he left behind. Using the jutsu to change the direction of wind in a small area took a few hours to practice. Though he had no idea how successful or unsuccessful he was at covering up his scent. He decided to have an Inyazuka check it sometime in the future. The next day, he tried learning wind levitation jutsu. While he didn't get this one on his first try, he still managed to perform it correctly within 10 minutes. He was able to levitate a leaf in air at a height of about 5 meters. It took him half an hour to do the same with a pebble. By the end of the day, he could levitate stones with a diameter of 15 centimeters and at a height of 15 meters and maintain it for 78 seconds. He had read in the scroll that this jutsu could be used to lift a boulder over a hundred meters in the sky. And he guessed that even that wasn't its limit. So in the future he could keep practicing it to his heart's content. The next day he tried the projectile control jutsu. And he finally had a challenge. This jutsu needed really fine control over the wind. He created a wind clone and had it launch shurikens and tried to control it. After a few hours, he managed to change the direction of the shuriken, but he couldn't control it. Since the shuriken spun, he felt that it made the jutsu harder and decided to experiment with a kunao instead. It decreased the difficulty considerably and at the end of the day, he managed to maintain decent control on a thrown kunao. He practiced this jutsu for another three days in order to get a better hang of it. After these four days, he felt as if he had a better grasp on the wind element. The following day, he tried the wind retrieving jutsu. Attracting an object towards yourself by having the winds flow towards you proved to be a challenge. The wind flowing towards yourself was the first obstacle. The second was that if he was able to create a strong enough wind flow, he himself would be affected by it. That issue made Fujin wonder if he could create wind paths around himself to perform this jutsu. He left that thought for the future. It took him three days to learn this jutsu and be comfortable with it. He returned the Shadow Clone Scroll to Hiruzen after that. Chapter 21, Chapter 21, Wind Release Jutsu, 2 It took just 10 days for Fujin to learn the 5 rank E Wind Release Jutsu. With one more month of vacation still remaining, he started training for the rank D Jutsu. He revamped his plans thinking, my initial plans were to learn in order of their importance, but since I'm able to learn at such a quick pace, let's just learn in the order of ease of learning them. So let's do Breakthrough Jutsu first. And follow it up with Dust Cloud Jutsu and Gale Surge. On getting all the required data from the library, he began the training for Breakthrough Jutsu. The initial process was very similar to Gale Jutsu. Only, the amount of chakra he had to gather was larger. The winds generated needed to have much more power. Also the winds had to be made sharper to cause damage. 
On his initial few tries, the result was only as good as Gale Jutsu, but he could clearly see where he should improve. In merely 15 minutes, he was able to expel a stronger gust of wind from his mouth. He noted, it ain't very powerful yet, but its damage should be damn good if paired with a fire jutsu. Anyways, this jutsu will require a lot of work. The process of gathering chakra as well as the process of converting chakra into wind should be faster. The chakra gathered should be larger as well to increase the damage done. He practiced it for seven days, until he got the hang of the jutsu. He also tested it on a poor tree, which resulted in it losing the majority of its leaves and many branches. His thoughts were, that's good. Though it probably won't kill anyone, it can easily injure most genins. The next day he grabbed the scroll for dust cloud jutsu and memorized it. This jutsu was incredibly easy. Its process was similar to breakthrough jutsu, just that it had to be focused on the ground to lift the dust above. It also had some aspects of wind levitation jutsu to ensure that the dust cloud existed for a longer time. He was able to raise a dust cloud on his very first try, however it lasted a very short time. Properly incorporating the wind levitation aspect took a few hours. But by the end of the day, the progress was sufficient. The next day, he began training for Gale Surge Jutsu. It was almost the opposite of wind retrieving Jutsu. Here, he had to distill the air around him with his chakra, and then suddenly release it up to three meters in a direction. In a way it resembled the almighty push of Nagato. Of course the power was extremely lacking. This jutsu didn't really provide a very good defense. However Fujin's reason for learning this jutsu was due to a couple of ideas he had with it. The first being, to increase the range and power of this jutsu and the second was to be able to release wind in every direction around him. That way this jutsu could become incredibly disruptive. If the range and power is increased, then it'll be perfect to create a nuisance on a battlefield whereas an omnidirectional release would be helpful in case he's ever surrounded by enemies. It again took him only a day to learn this jutsu and practice it to an acceptable level. On the next day he started learning the wind explosion jutsu. He treated this jutsu as a practice for his raise nan later on. Here he had to gather the wind and shape it into a spherical form and infuse a little chakra in it. That was the difference between it and Rei's Nan. Rei's Nan was purely made of chakra, whereas this jutsu was majorly made of wind and only had a small percent of chakra in it. Since the amount of chakra was low, these spheres could be launched at the enemy. Since he was already practicing for Rei's Nan, this jutsu became much easier to learn. Within a couple of hours, he was able to get the jutsu right for the first time. After trying it for a few times on nearby trees, he concluded, though the chakra infused in the winds explodes, it is not what causes the damage. The damage is caused by the winds, which become lethal after the explosion. They can cause a large amount of cuts and some of them can be very deep. I tried to infuse more chakra to increase the power of the explosion, however it didn't work as the wind sphere couldn't move as fast or as long distance. Even if I increase the amount of winds to maintain the ratio of chakra to wind, the sphere still becomes very bulky and no longer has the same speed. He sighed, I guess upgrading it would be a very complex task. Anyways, I should instead try to change my point of view. Perhaps I should try to combine this jutsu and the wind clone jutsu. If the wind clones can explode in this manner, then it will transform into a killing strike. The practice for wind explosion jutsu continued for a week. After the first day, Fujin stopped improving the wind sphere and instead focused on increasing his speed of forming the sphere and the speed of launching the spheres. His goal was to be able to launch these explosive spheres one after another without any breaks. That way, though it won't be a killing blow, it'll still cause a lot of damage to anyone who couldn't dodge or block these spheres. It could also cause death due to having lost too much blood. However, he was still quite far from reaching that stage. On the following day, he started learning the propelling winds jutsu. Here the task was to gather the chakra in his hands and burst it in a direction. That burst would apply an opposite force on him and move him in the opposite direction. 
This technique could be used to change directions quickly. However, in terms of movement on land, this technique was quite inferior to body flicker. Its advantage lay when the user's feet weren't on ground as this jutsu was very convenient to use while in air. Thanks to all his training over the past month, creating bursts was very easy. The issue was in controlling the amount of movement he had. Also his footwork needed a lot of adjustments. To employ this jutsu, one had to be very light on his feet and allow himself to be pushed back by the burst. While he could control the amount of force of the burst, the force applied back changed in accordance to how much pressure was applied on his feet. That was incredibly hard to control. On the third day of its training, he managed to bypass this issue by using two tactics. The first was, he would slightly jump in the direction where he wanted to go to and then use the burst to push him there. The second was to use the burst and then force his feet off the ground instantly which would make him move out of the way. However, the control for the second one was lacking a lot. It would cause him to flip in the air a couple of times which could be dangerous in a fight if the enemy followed and persisted with his or her attack. He trained to improve his control over this jutsu for six days, after which he was happy with his progress. That night after dinner, he decided to sit down and think about his current status. He thought, in the last 32 days, I have learned 5 rank E wind release jutsus and 5 rank D wind release jutsus. Including the 3 basic ninjutsu, body flicker, and shadow clones, I now knew 15 jutsus in all. He analyzed his jutsu further and concluded, my wind clone jutsu makes the normal clone jutsu redundant. I should completely drop its usage. Gale jutsu 2 doesn't need any more work. It can cover footsteps adequately and in fights, breakthrough jutsu is much better. That leaves 13 jutsus. Even though I have learned them, if I talk about truly mastering a jutsu, then I have probably mastered just one jutsu, which is body flicker jutsu, on which I spent 10 whole months. Next I should focus on mastering these wind release jutsus. Especially to perform them without hand signs. Even though the body flicker jutsu took 10 months to master, if I have learned anything in the last one month, it's that either my talent in wind nature is extremely high, or these wind release jutsus were very easy. So mastering them shouldn't take very long. I could also upgrade my substitution jutsu by substituting with my wind clone rather than nearby logs or other objects. Other than that, I could also try to combine wind clone and wind explosion jutsu. Similarly, I should experiment trying to use body flicker and wind propelling jutsu simultaneously. If body flicker jutsu could freely change directions, then it will be extremely lethal. And I still have to learn to strengthen my weapons using wind chakra. After thinking about these ideas, Fujin decided to think how he could get his hands on rank C jutsu. He thought, I'm not sure if I can get access to rank C and rank B jutsu anytime soon. I could ask Genki, but even if I am successful, I don't think he'd give me more than two or three jutsu. And that'll also attract a lot of attention. I could ask Hiruzen for access to higher sections in the library after the third year exam, but I'm doubtful that he'd agree. Even if he did agree, I will probably be monitored when I enter the library. And if they see me reading those high-ranked jutsus, they may have someone keep an eye on me. That would mean that I can't practice ninjutsu secretly like I do right now. And if they sent someone good enough to avoid me from sensing him, that would mean my skills would be known to Hiruzen and soon to Danzo. He sighed, leave it, let's follow stability. There's no point in taking such a huge risk. If I master all my current jutsu and also a few earth release jutsu and can't progress any further, then I can consider graduating early. Over the past year, he had thought quite a bit about graduating early. His thoughts were, initially I thought that graduating early would attract a lot of attention. Perhaps it still would in Naruto's generation. But right now, graduating early seems to be highly supported and even encouraged by teachers. In the last two years, there were many who graduated after their fourth or fifth year in the academy. A few even graduated after the third year. I guess the village wants to have new ninjas join in their ranks as soon as possible. Which is why it may be encouraged right now. 
though if someone graduates at six or seven, then it'll still attract a lot of attention. During this vacation, Fujin had almost entirely focused on ninjutsu. His routine was, work out in the morning, and then ninjutsu training the whole day. When he ran out of chakra, then he would practice meditation or practice shuriken throwing. Everything else was halted. Fujin decided to continue practicing his wind jutsus in the last week of vacation. However, he started additional training. He started trying to hit his wind clones with shurikens in order to improve his skill at it. Though he wasn't sure whether to be upset about his shuriken throwing skills or be happy at his clone's speed and maneuverability, as he didn't manage to hit his wind clone even once. However he did improve at a rapid pace. Chapter 22 Chapter 22, Fuinjutsu The third year started after the vacation. This year, Genki focused on other crucial aspects of a ninja apart from fighting capabilities. Fujin was a bit surprised that he didn't push for any more advanced jutsu, but on thinking for a bit, he understood more than half of the class isn't able to keep up. Considering that he asked me to learn wind nature, I'm guessing he gave similar advice to others who could keep up. This way, the struggling ones would catch up and the students who are performing well can reach the next level. I guess they want to ensure that every single kid from this class becomes a capable ninja to fill up the void left by the dead. Still, from his speech, it seems like everything will be taught in this year itself. After the lectures were over, Fujin went to the library. He went in section E and picked up the scroll named Introduction to Fuinjutsu. He recalled reading it a couple of years back. He read it once again, this time properly. On reading, he analyzed, Fuinjutsu contains two parts. The first is the writing part. However, this has two parts as well. First, the language. Fuinjutsu has special symbols which I have to understand before attempting to make seals. I will need to learn to draw each symbol properly as well as infuse my chakra in the mentioned manner. Any mistakes would make the seal fail and could cause unintended complexities if the seal did something else. This is actually very similar to hand signs, just that the number of symbols is much higher. The symbols serve various functions. The main function I can see is its ability to produce an element. There are symbols for each of the five elements, and symbols which can suppress or enhance them. There are also symbols to control time and space. A simple storage seal has a lot of space symbols, whereas a complex one will not only have space symbols, but also time symbols to ensure that time slows down in that storage seal. The second, was the logic part. This part is very similar to coding on Earth. Since I know coding, this part is easier for me. However, it ain't much of an advantage. Coding is pretty easy to learn, I'm sure the brighter kids from my class could pick it up within a week or two. After the writing part, the next part was to mold my chakra to create what the seal is used for. For a simple sealing scroll, I would have to create that storage space with the help of the symbols and also set up the conditions for activating the seal. Sigh, this is pretty complicated. Anyways, let's start. I should start with the symbols, but there are hundreds of them. It'll take months if I try to learn them all. So I'll just pick a seal and learn its symbols. That way I could monitor my progress. After analyzing all the seals in the scroll, he decided to learn the most used seal, the storage seal. It used 16 types of symbols. Majority of it were different types of space symbols. A few increased the amount of space in the seal. Some restricted the space in order to maintain the boundaries, some ensured that the space stayed stable and so on. He drew the required symbols perfectly on a spare scroll and also took down notes related to it. He had seen a few others do the same in the library, so he wasn't worried about getting into trouble, though he was very surprised at Kanaha's magnanimity. Once that was done, he left the library. He went to the market and transformed in an alleyway. After searching for a bit, he found the shop he was looking for. There he bought the special ink required for Fuinjutsu as well as special scrolls for the same. The scrolls were made of a special material. 
it was much sturdier and could apparently last for centuries if not damaged by external force. It could easily bear the chakra applied to it while seals were inscribed on it. The special ink, on the other hand, would make infusing chakra much easier. Trying to make the symbols with normal ink was a lot harder to do. However, there was another substitute for this special ink. That was the blood of a ninja. These items were quite expensive though. The scrolls cost 60 ryo each and a small bottle of ink cost 100 ryo. He bought five bottles of ink and five scrolls to practice. He sighed thinking, I hope these last a few months at least. I only have 4,370 ryo left with me. He then went home and on reaching there, he made a shadow clone. A couple of months of crazy physical training, high amount of meditation and constant ninjutsu training till he dropped due to lack of chakra had resulted in a high rate of growth of his chakra. It had increased by around 25%. It implied that he could now make two shadow clones if he wanted to. However both will barely have any chakra to do anything. If he made one shadow clone with exactly 50% chakra, then that shadow clone could last till his chakra dropped to 32% of Fujin's max chakra. So effectively, it had more than doubled the shadow clone's usable chakra. Fujin and his clone started the work on the first symbol. After trying it for half an hour, Fujin confirmed, as I thought, the amount of chakra needed to practice this is quite low. This is good news for me as my shadow clone will last a lot longer. Calculating from my clone's remaining chakra, I'd say he'll be able to last four hours while practicing these symbols. After an hour's practice, he dispelled his clone. On dispelling it, he got all the memories from the clone, along with a minor headache. He created another shadow clone. This time the clone practiced the symbol for two hours, took a break of two hour, then practiced it again for one hour, and then took another one hour break followed by one hour practice. Fujin went out to practice shuriken throwing on a wind clone and increasing the radius of his chakra field. He didn't practice any ninjutsu as practicing it with only half his chakra wouldn't last very long. After seven hours, he dispelled his clone. This time the headache was a bit worse, but still bearable. However, recalling Hiruzen's instructions, he decided to sleep. He was very happy with what he had done today. After waking up early the next morning, he thought, excellent, the experiment was successful. Now that my shadow clone can last seven hours and practice these symbols for four hours, I can leave my shadow clone at home and it can keep practicing Fuinjutsu while I'm at the academy. I guess my chakra needs to increase by another 20 to 25 percent so that my clone could practice for seven hours straight. Still, I need to decide what the clone should do in the spare three hours. He thought for a bit and then it clicked him, yeah, why not? I should buy a few cooking books for the clone to learn. In the past two years I have learned to make various breakfasts, but I didn't learn to make a proper lunch or dinner as I didn't have much spare time. This seems the perfect opportunity to learn it. All right, today, after the academy, I'll buy the books. Happy at the possibility of finally being able to eat delicious meals, he decided to analyze his daily routine, so with this sorted, I will continue to do my physical training in the morning, during lectures my clone can practice fuinjutsu while my main body pays attention for important lectures and work on my chakra field in the remaining time. After the lecture is over, I'll have to return home, dispel the clone and take a short, probably an hour's sleep. Then I can practice my ninjutsu and shuriken throwing. And the year continued in this manner. Genki taught a lot of practical knowledge that was needed for ninjas. And Fujin continued his hard training. Fujin did note that the class was a bit more serious this year. He thought, I guess his one-on-one -on -one talks had a good effect. After six months, Fujin was able to do the Ranky Wind Release Jutsus with no hand signs, only the Wind Clone needed a single hand sign. Among Rank D, he could do Wind Propelling Jutsu without hand signs, however the rest required one or two hand signs. Twenty-three days before the exams for the third year were up, he managed to do all but two without hand signs. 
Only Dust Cloud Jutsu still required a couple of hand signs and Wind Clone still required one hand sign. Similarly, Shadow Clone 2 had dropped to just one hand sign, the Clone Seal, which he wasn't able to do without hand signs. His Breakthrough Jutsu and Wind Explosion Jutsu now were able to do much higher damage and all the other Wind Release Jutsus had been mastered to a certain extent. It took his clone three months to master those 16 symbols and another month, to successfully make a storage seal. It took another month of practice to be able to do it comfortably without any mistakes. He had spent 4,000 Ryo on the materials till then, leaving him only with a little over 2,000 Ryo with him. He had created five proper sealing scrolls. Each time when he bought the materials, he had bought it from different shops under different disguises. Of the five shopkeepers he met, he had observed that one of them seemed greedy and with loose morals. He thought, I can't continue the expenditure on Fuinjutsu. Probably another four months before I'm totally broke. So I'll have to sell my scrolls. Trouble is, whom to sell? I can't give out my identity and I'm not sure if any shopkeeper will agree to buy without knowing the seller. Sigh. I'll have to approach the one with low morals and greedy nature. Luckily, one of the shopkeepers fits the bill. Unless he has put up a facade, so I should take some precautions. Preferably, I should send a clone under transformation jutsu. Chapter 23, Chapter 23, The First Deal Over the next few days, he had his shadow clone spy on the shopkeeper. Jenki's training for stealth was really helpful during this period. His name was Jing. He was probably in his forties. The clone observed his actions and his movements to see whether he is a hidden ninja. He had already tried to sense his chakra, it was merely at the civilian level. Fujin wondered if at some point in the past, Kanaha conducted a drive to unlock chakra of a lot of people. He also observed his dealings with other customers where he keeps his inventory, where he keeps his cash and so on. The spying was quite successful as on one lucky instance, he heard Jing bargaining with his supplier on the price of some of the items. On hearing them talk, he understood that the supplier sold an explosion tag to him for 500 ryo and storage scroll for 1,200 each, while he sold the storage scroll for 1,500 ryo and the explosion tags for 750 ryo to his customers. After being sure that he was a safe target, he sent his shadow clone with the five scrolls. His clone took the appearance of a middle-aged man and approached Jing when no one was in his shop. On seeing him approach, Jing put up a kind smile and said, Hello, what do you want to buy? Fujin's clone replied, Hello, I'm not here to buy, but to sell. Hearing that, Jing was quite surprised. He raised an eyebrow and asked, Sell? Who are you? Fujin's clone replied, You can call me Zoro. Jing noticed the fact that the man in front of him asked him to call that. He then asked, What do you want to sell? Fujin's clone paused for a moment, and stared in his eyes. He then said, Storage scrolls. Jing, trying to gain an upper hand in any negotiations, said dismissively I already have three suppliers for storage scrolls, why should I buy from you? Fujin's clone smirked and replied, Because my scrolls are better. That statement got Jing interested. He asked, How? And I'll inspect your scroll first before buying from you. Fujin's clone maintained his smirk and replied, Suit yourself and handed him a scroll. Jing took the scroll and invited him to a room inside the shop. On the way, he asked so what's the name of your company and who is the person in charge of it. However, he was dismissively answered with you don't need to concern yourself with it. Hearing that Jing thought, oh, a secret organization? So either he is someone who doesn't want anyone to know that he can make storage scrolls, or he has a secret organization behind him which probably does some shady work. Hee <laughs> hee, I'll make a ton of profits from this sheep. On reaching the room, Jing started inspecting the scroll. Fujin clone's claim wasn't empty. A standard storage scroll has 10 storage seals in it. However the one he made had 12 seals in it. When he saw Jing inspecting the scroll, Fujin's clone thought, 
it isn't difficult to make 12 seals in a single scroll. You just have to draw the seals closer to each other. Actually, if anyone wants to make an optimal storage scroll while keeping the size of the scroll the same, then he could make 25 seals in the scroll. However, for the ones who mass produce these seals 10 is the optimal number. The reason is that many buyers don't need more than 10 seals in a scroll. And for the ones who want more, the producers would profit more if they bought more scrolls. It also resulted in less effort needed to make the scroll. So it had become an optimal number for them to make maximum profits. However, I don't have any such restrictions. I just want to make some money to continue practicing Fuinjutsu. On looking at the number of seals in the scroll, Jing had similar thoughts. However, he could also think even further than Fujin as he had a lot more experience and information. He analyzed, while just having two more seals might not seem such a big deal to normal people, but I know the ninjas who want to buy scrolls having more storage seals in them. Just last week one Jounin was talking about the convenience of having a storage scroll with more seals. I can sell this scroll to him for a much higher price. Probably even over 2000 ryo. Then he looked at Fujin and thought, now the only question is whether he is aware of its value or not. After a few moments his expression became unpleasant and he angrily said, your scrolls only have two seals more. And the quality of each seal is the same as others. Ten seals are already more than enough for a single scroll. I will buy it from you, however I'll pay you the same price as I pay to my suppliers. Knowing the kind of guy the shopkeeper was, Fujin's clone smirked again and said, Now now, we both know that ain't true. There are too many ninjas who will willingly buy scrolls with more seals. Jing, however, dismissively replied, Yes, but they won't be willing to pay higher. Still seeing that you could add two more seals, I'll pay you a bit more. Instead of 1000 ryo, I'll pay you 1100 ryo. Hearing that, Fujin's clone scoffed and said, Do you think I live under a mountain? The standard scrolls are supplied for around 1200 to 1250 ryo. Even if you consider the least at 1200 ryo, just considering that it has 20% higher seals would raise the price to 1,440 ryo. Not to mention the fact that some ninjas might be willing to pay more. Hearing that put a lot of pressure on Jing. He internally sighed at the numbers thrown by the other party. The haggling continued for a few more minutes. Jing took advantage of the fact that the opposite party wasn't willing to reveal his origins and used that point to decrease the buying price to 1,150 ryo. After the haggling was over, Fujin's clone thought, sigh, that was some intense haggling. This fellow is much better at haggling than me. But either way, while he may think that he made a profit, just being able to sell these scrolls for over 1,000 ryo each is more than enough for me. He then smirked internally, thinking well I still have one more advantage to play. While he may be a better haggler, I have the advantage of being the lone supplier of the 12 seals storage scrolls. Hehe, he, I am so interested in looking at his final decision. After deciding the price to be 1150 ryo, Jing asked, So Zoro, how many scrolls do you have to sell? Fujin's clone didn't reply. Instead he placed four scrolls in front of him. Looking at that, Jing was at a loss of words. He thought, just four. So including the one I inspected, there are only five? What is he playing at? Seeing that the seller wasn't saying anything further, he showed an enraged expression and asked angrily, Only five? You wasted all my time for only five scrolls. Fujin's clone calmly replied, the boss has sent a few like me to other shopkeepers to sell it to. Depending upon the price each shopkeeper gives for these scrolls, the future sales to those shops will be decided. After hearing that, Jing's expression was really a sight to see. Fujin's clone had a laugh internally. It was the first time in their negotiation that Jing had lost his composure. Fujin's clone's thoughts were, while I don't necessarily need a higher price, Doing this would cast much lesser doubts on me. Also the existence of a boss behind me will keep this fellow from going overboard. 
Jing however got lost in his thoughts, damn. What to do now? By buying one scroll for 1150 ryo, I probably won't get any more scrolls from him in the future. But if I pay high, and others still pay higher, then I still might not get any in the future. Still though, a boss and more people like him? Are they trying to change the whole storage scrolls market? He thought for a bit more and then asked, will you be selling all your scrolls to only the one who buys it for the highest price, or others as well? Fujin's clone replied, we will be selling it to many shopkeepers. Only the amount of scrolls we sell to them would depend on the prices they offer. Of course, the ones who offer lower than average might not get any. But I'm not privy to the exact plans. Jing analyzed for a minute and then sighed. He thought, buying it for a low price would mean killing the goose that drops the golden eggs. But how much should I buy it for? I don't want to pay a lot for it. Otherwise my profits won't be enough. Let me go with 1,500 ryo. That should be enough to earn higher off them than normal storage scrolls. He then offered a price of 1,500 ryo per scroll. They completed their deal and talked a bit about how and when future deals would happen. Fujin's clone walked out of the shop with 7,500 ryo. He handed the money to Fujin in an alleyway while he wandered off a bit and dispelled himself after confirming that there was no one around. After looking at the cash, Fujin's thoughts were, wow, am I really that good at negotiating? However after getting his clone's memories back, he thought, nope, I am probably closer to a novice rather than a master. It was just that the final bluff was too much of a temptation for him to ignore. Probably, he also thought that a powerful organization might be behind me, which threatened him a bit. Well whatever, this is good cash. I should consider selling scrolls often to him. He then went to a few other shops under different disguises to buy materials. He bought 30 bottles of ink, 25 scrolls, and 200 blank paper tags. The blank paper tags cost 10 ryo each. So in all he spent 6,500 ryo on the materials. He then bought some meat and returned home. He thought, now that I do have some cash, I should definitely increase my meat consumption. The meat business here is entirely dominated by the Akimichi clan. All the shops which sell meat belong to them. I wonder if it is because they are good at it due to economy of scale, or if they were given monopoly over this business when they joined Kanaha. After that day, Fujin began learning other seals too. He learned a few basic ones like heat seal, cool seal, hard seal, soft seal, shock seal, and wet seal. These seals used elemental symbols. However the number of symbols required was much lower as compared to a storage seal as these did very basic things. The heat seal could only be used to warm a room. While the cool seal absorbed heat from the surroundings to make the room cooler. Shock seal could apply a small electric shock, but it was very harmless too as Fujin could bear that shock without any issue. Hard seal was used to harden a surface or an object whereas soft seal did the reverse. Wet seal was used to gather the moisture from the air and make the surface it had been stuck to wet. All these seals had to be made on a paper tag, and to use it, it would have to be applied on a surface and be activated. The elemental seals had a requirement of the creator being able to use those elements. But since these seals were very basic, he could do it despite not having mastered fire, water, and lightning natures. In all it took him four and a half months to learn all these seals. During this time, he also started selling 20 storage scrolls to Jing every month for 30,000 ryo. He kept the amount low so that the major suppliers of storage scrolls won't be annoyed by him and try to find him. On the other hand, Jing was very happy too as he could sell these scrolls for around 2,300 ryo. By the time third year's exams were up, Fujin had saved over 100,000 ryo. Chapter 24, Chapter 24, Graduation Exam In the third year, Jenki had focused entirely on the basic skills. It made this year a lot more fun. After having taught one skill entirely, he used to come up with games so that everyone would get used to using it. For instance, after teaching how to move stealthily. 
he gave everyone 29 tags with their roll numbers written on it. Everyone had to put these tags on the backs of other 29 students and avoid others putting those tags on their own back. Thanks to Fujin being a censor, no one managed to put any tag on his back. The few who tried to sneak up, got a punch or an elbow to their face. While hunting wild animals had resulted in most students making some really funny faces. Killing an animal didn't create an issue for everyone, though Fujin did sigh thinking, I never thought that my first kill in this world would be a freaking rabbit. The fun part according to Jenki, which he enjoyed the most, was having everyone cut open the animal they hunted, clean it and prepare it for cooking. An act that disgusted most of the students, including Fujin as he had never done anything like this in his earlier life. Only Nobu was completely unaffected. And in order to make everyone learn cooking properly, Jenki banned bringing lunch to the academy for a few days. Their lunch was the wild animal they cooked. Later in the year, he also introduced tree climbing as a chakra control exercise for his students. In this manner, the year progressed. One week before the final exams, Jenki dropped the news that surprised Fujin. He thought, while I did know about it, for the announcement to be made this suddenly is surprising. Jenki had announced, if there is anyone among you who wants to attempt the graduation exam, then let me know within the next three days. However, by the end of the day, Jenki did regret announcing that right in the morning. He sighed, damn, I should have announced it when the lectures ended. No one paid attention to today's lectures. After going home, Fujin thought hard about it. On analyzing, he concluded, there's still a lot more for me to learn. Right now my wind jutsus, basic jutsus, shadow clones, body flicker, shuriken throwing and taijutsu has progressed to the level that I'm satisfied with. But I still have to learn earth release jutsus. And also need to work on sword skills and genjutsu. As for fuin jutsu, though it has been coming along well. I still haven't started on the intermediate level seals which are available in section D of the library. And there's also Ray's Nan still left to master. Also, while graduating will ensure that I won't have to waste time in the academy, but since Kanaha currently is suffering a shortage of ninjas, I suppose my free time might be curtailed rather than getting more time to train. Also the missions might have more risk than usual, especially with the third war still fresh in everyone's minds. All right then, I won't participate in it. While the top scorer not attempting the graduation exam might raise questions, it's better than dying on some rank C mission gone wrong. However, unlike Fujin, the other kids from his class, were perfectly brainwashed by the will of fire. And hence many were interested in participating in the graduation exam. However, knowing that they won't be able to pass, Many parents didn't allow their children to take part in the exams. In the end, there were seven students who decided to participate in the graduation exam. Yori, Nobu, Teru, Hoka, a civilian kid, and the two from Abarame and Hotaki clans decided to attempt the exam. Fujin did see that Jenki was a bit disappointed in him not attempting the graduation exam. But he was relieved as Jenki didn't talk with him on the matter. The graduation exam was around a week after the third year exam. The third year exam went as usual. A few more parameters were added to the exam based on the skills that Jenki had taught in this year. This year, the reward from the Hokage was also dependent on the graduation exam performance. That pretty much meant that Fujin won't get any rewards for rank 1. So he decreased his performance slightly in the written exam and once again didn't give his all in the ninjutsu exam. So in the end, he only ranked fourth. Teru ranked first, followed by Nobu and then Hana. Fujin was actually very grateful that Hana wasn't attempting the graduation exam. While he wasn't aware of the reason, it meant that he wasn't the only one with high scores who wasn't attempting the graduation exam. Unknown to him however, Hana was extremely upset that her parents didn't allow her to become a ninja so soon. A week later, the graduation exam was conducted. For the students from the elite classes, the exam was very similar to normal exams. Only, it was more comprehensive. 
The main addition to the exam was a 50-point exam that provided students with various scenarios that they would face and asked what they would do in those scenarios. Except Nobu, everyone else struggled in this exam. In Teijutsu, only Hoka and Teru performed above PAR, while Yori and Nobu were barely average. In Ninjutsu however, Teru, Yori and Nobu displayed why exactly they deserved to be genins. Yori perfectly displayed two rank C Jutsus, Fireball Jutsu and Phoenix Sage Fire Jutsu. Teru was able to perform Jutsus of two different elements. He was able to perform one rank C Water Gunshot Jutsu and three rank D Jutsus, Ground Shaking Jutsu, Headhunter Jutsu and Stone Shuriken Jutsu. Nobu, showed off his variety by performing one rank E Jutsu of each of the five elements. In addition, he was also able to perform higher ranked Jutsus of Fire Nature, which was his affinity. He performed two rank C Jutsus, Fire Dragon Jutsu and Flame Bullet Jutsu. After all the tests were conducted, the performance of all students were analyzed. From Fujin's class, only Teru, Yori and Nobu graduated and became Genins. Due to his better performance than Nobu and Yori in Teijutsu, he ranked first in his class. From the batch which was one year senior to Fujin, 11 students graduated and 28 of their seniors graduated as well. However, Fujin was oblivious to all these developments. As soon as the summer vacation began, Fujin went back to his ninjutsu training. He was satisfied with his progress in wind release and decided to start training earth release jutsus and hence visited the library. A slash N, this is probably the last time during the academy when it'll be theory heavy. But since the previous feedback mentioned that there was too much theory, so I won't go into explanation of each and every jutsu. If Fujin or someone else decides to learn them later, I'll explain the jutsu then. He looked at every earth release jutsu in section E and section D and made a list. The first thing he noticed was that Kanaha had a lot more earth release jutsus as compared to wind. Though it wasn't really surprising considering the low number of wind release users. The list of earth release jutsus he created was Rock Throw Jutsu, E. Rock Shield Jutsu, E. Stone Bracers Jutsu, E. Swift Earth Jutsu, E. Earth Release, Transformation Jutsu, E. Trapping Jutsu, E. Mud Moat Jutsu, D. Earth Clone Jutsu, D. Rock Thorn Bed Jutsu, D. Stone Shuriken Jutsu, D. Headhunter Jutsu, D. Pebble Barrage, D. Ground Shaking Jutsu, D. Earth Tremor Sense Jutsu, D. Earth Mound Creation Jutsu, D. Mud Interceptor Jutsu, D. Earth Military Movement Jutsu, D. Stone Breastplate Jutsu, D. Mud Weight Jutsu, D. Earth Release Camp Jutsu, D. Earth Release Note Jutsu, D. His first thoughts were, hmm, no Earth Wall Jutsu? That's a rather simple Jutsu, to be ranked higher. Even the Iron Skin Jutsu of Kakuzu isn't here. I hope it is there in higher sections. He then began reading each and every Jutsu and started analyzing them. It took him around two hours to go through each and every one of them. He concluded, the Earth Release Jutsus are more comprehensive than the Wind Release Jutsus. The only point where it is bad is that the offense is lacking a bit. Surprisingly many of the Jutsus in this list have a similar potential like Wind ones. However, there is one big drawback. Most of the Earth Release Jutsus, especially the ones with high potential, will be severely restrained if the fight is over a water body. Now that I think about it, IWA is pretty lucky to not share any border with Kiri. Otherwise they'd be in very passive situations in the wars. Anyways, I can ignore all offense-oriented Earth Release Jutsus. For defense, Rock Shield Jutsu is a good option. It probably is an inferior version of Earth Wall Jutsu. So it can be upgraded later. I also wonder if I could use the hard seal to make the shield more durable. For trapping, Mud Moat Jutsu is a good option. It creates a 6 feet deep moat with 6 feet radius around the user. 
it should serve as a base for that rank A swamp jutsu which Jiraiya had. I don't recall the name though. As for movement, earth military movement jutsu is a must learn. It allows traveling through the ground for short distances. Having another way to escape is always good. Earth release, camp jutsu is pretty handy too. It can make a cave within mountains. There are a few small hills in the village, like the one where there is a waterfall. I could try this jutsu somewhere near there. Also, these four jutsus make a neat combo. I could use camp jutsu to build a cave within a mountain. Then use rock shield jutsu to hide the entrance. Prepare a moat around the mountain, and if anyone manages to find the cave, then I can escape with earth military movement jutsu. He began his training for the earth release jutsus. While he hadn't honed his earth nature as much as wind nature, he still had honed it a lot. He could crumble boulders to dust in just a few seconds. That's why he managed to learn them very quickly. However, they were a bit tougher to learn when compared to wind release jutsus. He learned rock shield jutsu within a few minutes and then spent a couple of days on it to increase the size and durability of the rock shield that he used to raise from the ground. He also attempted to apply the hard seal on the rock shield he raised. It increased the durability of the shield. However applying the seal and activating it took around 1.5 seconds to pull off, something he might not have in a fight. The camp jutsu was learnt within a day. Though the cave was a bit dusty, he could just use breakthrough jutsu to clean up all the dust. He could also use the rock shield jutsu to cover up the entrance if he wanted to hide. Though he had to leave a small space open in order for air to circulate. He didn't bother perfecting this jutsu as there was no need for it right now. The next was the mud moat jutsu. It had an aspect of water nature as well. So it took him close to a week to learn it. He would need to improve his water nature if he had to improve this jutsu further. So he decided to leave this matter for his future self. And lastly, he practiced earth military movement jutsu. This one was quite difficult to learn. The jutsu involved moving through the ground like he is swimming. So he had to soften the ground a lot to be able to do that. It took him 11 days to pull it off successfully for the first time. It took another two weeks for him to be able to move around more freely. He was only limited by the amount of oxygen he had underground. The softening of the ground resulted in some oxygen entering underground, however it was very limited. He stopped when he was able to move 100 meters. He thought, all right, the earth release jutsus have been learnt. Though I still need to work more on rock shield jutsu and earth military movement jutsu. However, I can do that slowly over the next year. Next, I need to learn chakra flow. He went to the library to learn about it. Chapter 25, Chapter 25, Chakra Flow He visited the library, and searched in all four sections he had access to. Surprisingly, he didn't find a single scroll on what he wanted. He thought, this is surprising. Does it mean that they are kept in a higher section or do they not provide that technique for normal ninjas? While leaving the library, he analyzed for a bit more, yeah, that might be the case. Infusing chakra into weapons isn't that big of a deal. If I recall right, most samurai were able to do it. However in Kanaha, Asuma was the only one I recall to do it. And Danzo too was able to do it, but his method was different. Anyways, I suppose I'll have to try it myself. I don't think Jenki or his friends might know this. On the way back to the mini forest, he thought of various ways to do it. His first thoughts were, let's just try to flow my chakra through a kunao like I try to do it when trying to cut a leaf. Only, instead of trying to cut the kunao, I'll try to make its edges sharper. He then tried to implement that trick, however he had many troubles in doing it. He had instantaneous success in what he was trying to do as he was able to imbue his kunao with his chakra on his first try. However, the chakra amount that got imbued was very low and even after trying to infuse more chakra in it for two days, he didn't improve much. Also while the kunao's sharpness and penetrating capabilities improved, it wasn't much and he didn't make any improvements over the couple of days. 
he thought, what a bummer. This seems to be a dead end. I guess having a chakra blade might aid, but something seems wrong. Perhaps I'll improve if I stick to this, however it'll probably take years. I need to think of another way. He thought for a few hours, and then it clicked him. He decided to go the Hunter x Hunter way. He thought, yeah, that's right. I could try the similar way as in Hunter x Hunter. I'll first try to release my chakra and coat it all over my body. And then try and extend that coat to cover a kunao I'm holding. While the method is very inefficient, it should allow me to learn it faster. Once I'm able to do it, I'll have to practice doing it without coating my body and directly infusing chakra into the kunao. Coating the entire body with chakra wasn't something any ninja preferred to do. The reason was simple, insufficient chakra. Doing it would exhaust the chakra of the user very quickly. From what Fujin could recall, apart from the Jinchurikis, only the Reikichs coated their body with chakra. Others would at most coat a body part or weapons to enhance them. Fujin began training in the new way. And it was very exhausting. In merely seven minutes, he ran out of chakra. However, he could see that he was making some progress in extending his chakra to his kunao. It was slow, but a steady growth he observed in seven minutes. He guessed that in around ten attempts, he'll be able to perfectly coat the kunao with his chakra. However, with the chakra exhaustion, he could probably only train it around three or four times in a day. Not to mention, there was much more to do after coating the kunao with his chakra. Not wanting to waste weeks on this, he decided to buy soldier pills. After resting for a couple of hours, he went to his home to get cash and then left to buy the pills. He transformed in an alleyway and went to a shop that sold soldier pills. Soldier pills were extremely useful for a ninja. When he read it the first time, he was a bit amazed by it. A top quality soldier pill, could provide around 30 times the chakra of an average jounin. And it didn't do it right away, but provided the chakra in small parts, every hour, consistently over three days. It also released enzymes which stimulated the ninja to stay awake for three days. That's why someone who consumed a soldier pill could fight for three days straight. Unknown to Fujin, there were also better soldier pills, but they were custom made for top ninjas and not available for everyone. Fujin decided to buy soldier pills of medium quality. These were mostly used by Chuyunans. Fujin's own chakra reserve now was much higher than an average fresh genin. It was probably better than an average genin. In the next year, his chakra reserves should grow to the same level as the weaker Chuyunan Academy teachers. Despite not yet having Chuyunan level chakra reserves, he still decided to buy medium quality soldier pills because of how exhausting the training was. He bought five pills, for a total of 10,000 ryo. The prices did make him curse out and also thank the fact that he had started learning Fuinjutsu. The next three days, he trained a lot. On the first day itself, he was able to coat his kunao with chakra. He then charged it with wind nature, and that had an immediate impact on the kunao's sharpness and penetrating power. The chakra extended the kunao's range by 5 centimeters. He experimented a bit with his new ability. He thought, excellent, I can cut through branches like I am cutting through thin air. While I can't cut a tree, it's because the size of the kunao is too small. With a sword even that shouldn't be an issue. The kunao is also able to penetrate deep within a boulder. I recall Naruto and Asuma being able to penetrate through a boulder in one of the fillers, so I could try that. Honestly. If an enemy underestimates me and tries to block the kunao, then he'll be very badly injured. But I do need to reduce the amount of chakra I need to do this. The next part of the training should be to directly try to coat the kunao without coating my whole body too. So how should I proceed? The thought for a bit and then concluded, just directly trying to coat it will probably end up in failure. I should instead try to coat only my hand with chakra and then try to extend it to kunao. I guess I could also try to train in how to infuse chakra in my punches in this way too. While it won't be Tsunade level, the power of chakra infused punches should completely outmatch the power of normal punches. 
he then proceeded trying to coat only his fist with chakra. It took a few hours to be able to do that. He thought, okay, this wasn't so hard. He then tried to extend that chakra to Kunao. While he was able to extend it, the amount of chakra he could now extend to the Kunao was much lesser. He thought, I see, since I'm just coating my fist, that's why the amount of chakra I'm extending is much lesser. So basically I'll have to concentrate more chakra in my fist. He then started to concentrate more chakra in his fist. This was much harder than expected. It needed a very high level of chakra control to be able to do that. Luckily for Fujin, he had trained his chakra control a lot. It took a day for him to be able to double the chakra he could concentrate in his fist. Not satisfied with the amount, he kept on trying more. However, soon three days were about to be done. Hence he decided to rush back home before it. As soon as it was three days, exhaustion hit him real hard. The side effect of using soldier pills was bad. Luckily it was only a short-term exhaustion and didn't have any long-term effects. He straight away went to sleep, without setting any alarm. When he woke up, he looked at the clock and thought, Oh, it's 8.10 am. Wait, I fell asleep yesterday at 4.30 pm. So I slept for over 15 hours? Damn the exhaustion hits hard. Also I'm very hungry right now. After brushing and cleaning up, he grabbed a couple of ration bars and ate them. He did his morning workout, though it was three hours late, and decided to go out to eat meat for lunch in Yakiniku Q. He rested for the rest of the day, and the next day, continued his training. It took another three days for him to double the amount of chakra he could concentrate in his fist again. He thought, wow, I wonder how strong my punch is now. Let's test out on a boulder. On punching the boulder, a lot of cracks appeared on the boulder, but Fujin was screaming internally, bloody hell. This hurts like a bitch. After a few moments, he checked his fist, and thought wow, there are no visible injuries. Though it hurt a heck of a lot, it didn't cause any bleeding or injury. It only caused a few small scratches. I guess I have really become strong. He spent the next 15 days increasing the amount of chakra he could infuse in his kunao and also making the chakra much sharper. While just infusing wind chakra in it had made it very potent, he had to shape his chakra to form a thin edge that aligned with the edges of his kunao for maximum effect. By the time the vacation was over, his kunao could penetrate through three 4 meters wide boulders and get stuck in the fourth boulder. And the range of his kunao, due to chakra flow, was increased by 15 centimeters. However, he noticed that once he was able to increase the amount of chakra infused in the kunao and make it much sharper, it started to deteriorate the condition of his kunao. Two days before the vacation was over, the kunao with which he was practicing with crumbled. He sighed thinking, well it was a kunao I picked up in the forest. I wonder if a new kunao will last longer. I guess I'll need to buy a few kunao later on. I should also check on the prices of chakra blades. The day before the academy started, he visited the best weapon store in Kanaha to look for chakra blades. He hadn't transformed this time and just went in as an enthusiast. The reason was that he wanted to show an interest in it and the fact that the shopkeeper was a retired ninja whose chakra was almost twice that of Genki. The prices however shocked him. He thought, what the fuck? A small chakra knife costs 2 million ryo? Heck, why didn't Kakuzu steal Asuma's chakra blades instead? And though they don't have any chakra swords, the details in the book say that the cheapest one costs 7.5 million ryo. The prices got him thinking, damn, what should I do? The costs are too high. If I focused a lot on Fuinjutsu, and sold a lot of seals, I might be able to make that much in a year or two but it'll attract a lot of attention. Not to mention that the chakra swords have to be custom made, so trying to get it with a random disguise will most probably not work. I really doubt that the village won't pay any attention to such a big purchase. If I wait till I can earn by doing missions, I doubt I can earn this much till I am able to do rank A missions. That's a long time away. He thought for a bit more, and then it clicked, that's right, 
I do have the option of asking it as a reward from Hiruzen. This year, I'll train a lot to dual wield swords. And even show off my training a bit to show everyone how interested I'm in swords. And Genki knows that my nature affinity is wind. So they will get the hint. Though there are two main problems. The first being that pretty much everyone will know about it. The second is whether Hiruzen will actually reward me something so expensive. He thought for a bit more, oh well fuck it. I can bypass the first issue by asking Hiruzen to hold onto my swords. When I'm confident that I can take on Jounin's, I'll ask him for the swords. As for second, if he refuses, then I will ask him for smaller chakra blades. With all the crap he talks about the will of fire, it'll be damn fun to see how he would refuse a young kid twice. Sadly, I have built a rather mature and a bit nervous image. So I can't throw tantrums if he refused me twice. Though I'll definitely have my revenge if he says no twice despite boring me for hours year after year with his brainwashing speech. If he declines, then in the future, I'll fund Naruto's pranks by supplying him with various seals. Then I'll enjoy watching the mess he makes of Kanaha. With those thoughts, he laughed like a devil. If Hiruzen was aware of Fujin's thoughts, he'd have probably shivered. A slash N, apologies for the delay. Deciding how to go about chakra flow took some time. 